I'm just kidding. AJ Styles versus The Undertaker. Sign me up for sex. This is out of nowhere. Out of nowhere wrestling podcast episode 187. I hope you guys can subscribe down below. Hit that hit the red subscribe button. Like seriously. Hit the fucking button. Really? And hit the like button too. What the fuck? I'm asking for a like now. I don't give a shit. I don't care if you hate this video later. If you hate it, go back and dislike it. You're gonna like it though. So hit the thumbs up and stick the thumb directly up the rock's ass. And I got a channel called, I'm sorry, I thought it was S. Dollar on my channel. Uh, my bad. But S. Dollar still has the belt. We're gonna get it from him. And it's gonna be monetized this in a couple weeks. Undertaker, AJ Styles, WrestleMania, AEW, NXT, the numbers are in. Thunderoso is in a car accident or something. I don't know. We'll talk about that later too, man. Uh, there's a bunch of shit going down. There's really uh, a lot of stuff to talk about. And we're going to do it on Out of Nowhere 187. Get a beer or something. I don't know. music i'm sorry i still don't have all my files uh transferred over from one computer to another you would think it'd be easy to do that but um i've had to do it manually on usb port and i don't know i've run into a lot of problems apparently my son had a scratch cornea we were trying to figure out what's wrong with his eye for three days finally he went to the doctors and it's a fucking uh, scratch cornea yeah makes sense yeah that's, they, at least that's an easy fix but well, it's like we didn't know what was going on. Like, is he? We thought he was not sleeping, or he was like staring at the TV too much. Yeah, is it allergies? Is it? Yeah, like it all everything kinds of just things. broke down last night. And every morning, it's like Lee is angry because he's like, I can't. Oh my god, I can't see. Like, and um, you know, we called the doctor on the second day to be like, Yo, our kid, blah blah, blah and he's really not able to go to school, and he really won't let us put eye drops in. And then they're like, Oh. Yeah, well, you know, put it. In, they told us to flush it with something or whatever. And I, normally they say bring your kid in all the time, but they didn't the other day, and so she didn't. So yeah, it's flu up. season. They don't want to spread germs. That's, that's They're what it is. They like just stay, like they don't want you to come in. But unless it's absolutely, you know, on the third day though, I'm like, I'm like, we gotta fucking bring him somewhere because this is crazy. So she brings him down the street to the med clinic place, 
And the guy's like, yeah, he's got a script. And he, so now he's got antibiotics. He's got the stuff. And um, and I was like, you better... Because, like, Leah was mad at him. She thought he was pretending or, like, kind of exaggerating something. Yeah. Because, like, you know what I mean? He didn't want to go to school or whatever. He had a big project thing. So we're, you know... Yeah, you think it's just them trying to, to cut class. I dealt with the same thing. My grandmother was taking away toys and all that shit because yeah. they couldn't figure out what the hell was wrong for ages. I didn't get diagnosed till my late teens, but... I would get these bad headaches and vomit, and they'd be like, "Oh, you're making yourself vomit. That's what it has to be. Like you're you're making yourself upset and anxious because yeah. there's nothing medically wrong that they could figure out." So, yeah, we had to. I was like, "You better apologize to him because uh, <laughs> poor yeah, kid had see. a fucking scratched eye for Christ's sake." Which I had when I was little too, and I didn't even think of it. I just didn't. You know, you yeah. usually you know. Usually you're like, "Oh, I cut myself," or like, "I oh, I poked myself in the eye, and now it's fucked up." But he's got giant eyelashes that get in his eyes a lot, and he gets the same problem where his eyes watering and he can't see because he's got an eyelash. And um, yeah. I think one of the things we thought was that maybe he had an eyelash. But so I think maybe an eyelash cut his eye. Anyway, we're talking about my kid. Who cares? Let's get back well, to wrestling. I mean, my bad. It, it is a good thing in the sense that I don't want to sound oh like I'm God, excited that he's got an eyelash. Jesus, you're but, fucking turning wider. <laughs> but I am happy that uh, it wasn't anything we discussed last night. Nothing permanent, you know. It's right. not allergies. It's not anything that's clogged or requires surgery. Or we, we we weren't sure last night as we went through all the possibilities. So, right. thankfully, that's the essentially best outcome out of it all. No infection that the other kids have to worry about. It's not pink eye, you know, or that spreads to the house. And yeah, but we're on the road to WrestleMania, and, and we're in full swing. You know, lots of news coming out today. Obviously, the biggest news uh, being reported right now is the rumors that The Undertaker will be facing AJ Styles. That going nuts around the dirt sheets. Which is weird because I well, we talked about that. We I don't know which one of us, but I know we've dabbled about that match a year yes, ago. Yes, we have. And the interesting part to me is, is that The Undertaker was not set for WrestleMania until they had the updated ticket numbers. Mm -hmm. And they even saw that scalpers... Have lost drastic amount of you know drastic amounts of money this year on WrestleMania. Right, and and not only that, what's the uh, there's one other big clue, and I bet you know it. What's the other big clue? Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, the fact that they want to go ahead and have it not be on the network is is a huge possibility. Oh, okay, as well, so that's so. not what I was thinking. I mean, like oh, why okay. why I believe the Undertaker also why I believe this why why we can okay you, here's what why can we believe the Undertaker won't will be at WrestleMania. The other clue that why he'll be at WrestleMania. Why is that? Let me, let me delve into your psyche here. He's not booked for Saudi Arabia. Yes, yes, that's a great point because we had heard originally they wanted him there and they kind of went ahead and flipped uh, for, for a couple of reasons. I have personally heard today uh, it being rumored as the fact that ticket sales are down. When have you ever seen WrestleMania tickets as low as $43? I mean, even even in the way back, maybe, you know, maybe bleacher seats. I swear, bleachers were like dead, dead last bleacher seats, maybe, but not uh, for for arena seats. You know, mid level. I mean, they're having huge problems selling these seats. You can you can literally go on Ticketmaster and StubHub, look at the seating chart. It, it I, it's not like I have to tell you like, oh, it's purported or it's. You can literally go and look at how many seats are still available openly. I mean, they they start at forty something dollars. They work their way up to you know, over $1,000 a ticket, and every level has some solid amount of tickets available. And the thing is, is that scalpers can't even get anything above face value for these at this point in time. Um, Wrestling Observer was talking about that the other day, saying that, you know, that that's always not a good sign. And it seems to be that the scalpers can't catch a break because any show they don't scoop up seems to be the one in high demand. So... That's so bizarre, man. Like, and you can tell the trends. Like, I mean, this is why. Like, even when you talk about WrestleMania in Los Angeles, the big announcement the other day, you know that. Yes. Oh, it's in Los Angeles, and this that place is huge. I mean, good and luck. I, good luck yeah, filling exactly. that place. That's a massive arena. You know, just freshly built, and they even had to move the date because the normal time they would have it would be Easter weekend. So now it'll be in March instead of April. And when I say forty, you know, forty, forty, fifty dollars for tickets, I'm talking about decent seats, not the far up. Last row. Yeah, he's not so. talking about the back of the balcony. You're talking about like the upper bowl areas. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. So usually, mean, you don't see those for that that amount, and so now we, we kind of know they're 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 aiming for a few things here. When the network started, it was a, a solid idea, but Vince, you know, when he sees something not working, he tends to nuke it. And if they take the pay per views off the network, 
people are, don't really have a reason to subscribe. NXT isn't there anymore. I don't know. I mean, and and that's one of the things that was discussed as of the most recent earnings call was that Vince was considering having uh, WrestleMania be the first of many pay-per-views to go off the network and be available for purchase. Whether they go through DAZN or Peacock, most likely it would be Peacock due to the fact that they have a tie established with Universal and NBC with them being on the USA network. But still, they want to go back to a pay-per-view why don't streaming they, option. Why don't they do what I was thinking about the other day, which was you know, put it on their own network for charge like you have the network but then you want to watch wrestlemania you got to buy it for 12.99 or something even that would be so long as it's you know 10 20 dollars that's fine but if they're going back to a six dollar price tag i i don't see how they're going to recoup losses here because i mean people are going to leave the network and not purchase no that's that, that's the worry yeah that's what i'd be worried about i mean like me with the network i mean I mean, dude, I'm one of those people that would probably keep it. I mean, not just because I'm doing a show, but because I watch so much wrestling that it's either go out and buy a bunch of DVDs and continue collecting DVDs, yeah, which I don't have room for, or keep the network going, and I can go back and watch any wrestling of all time ever on, on the network. And Yeah, it, it's good to have for, you know, nostalgic purposes when you want to do research, anything of that you know, a grain of, of ilk. But unfortunately, going forward, there's not much motivation to get people to keep it for retention in, in lieu of what's going hot now. I mean, Raw and SmackDown aren't live on the network. Neither is NXT anymore. And I mean, even right here from Forbes, one of the bigger stories coming out of Thursday's earnings call, which we didn't really get to discuss much of, was that their main focus right now is selling off pay-per-view rights to other major streaming services. Right. They're, they're trying to stockpile revenue in place of sinking key performance indicators. So the KPIs are down across the board for, for just so many things. I, I know, you know, 75 uh, Sky says, you know, why not take away the free month and charge at the spot? That would be ideal because so many yeah. people go ahead and, and, and just do the free month over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah, get rid of that. You don't need that. Everybody knows what it is by now. Or maybe yeah. once a year, once a year, have a free month. Vince McMahon is quoted as saying, we have a lot of options uh, for network monetization. We could continue on as we are now with an enhancement tier, which was what you had said. Uh, so, you know, you would have an option. You would have the regular network with all the content you have now. And then they would uh, also charge you for pay-per-views at a slight increase. Uh -huh. He said, there's no more better time to exercise the selling of our rights to all the majors who, quite frankly, are really clamoring for our content. They which, want content, man. They, I mean, listen. I know they, everybody wants content, but. I mean, dude, Star Trek, I use Star Trek as an example. Unfortunately, Star Trek fucked up. Star Trek sucks. The new Star, the new Star Trek sucks. And they offered, they had those short treks. And, I mean, their offer was like $100 million um, to Netflix. And Netflix said no, but Netflix said yes to a ton of other dumb shit around that same price. That's why they offered $100 million for, for, for like fucking eight episodes. For eight. Yeah. For oh, eight, yeah. I mean, look what they, they're willing to pay for Friends. Yeah. Like, look at that. For, I mean, dude. For Universal and all this stuff, it, it ends up being upwards of a billion dollars for something like 10 years to, to watch Friends from the 90s again. But they need shows to get people mm -hmm. to go ahead and, and tune in. Look at what we – I was astonished when I heard this number. Again, last week, I don't know where we, we didn't get to discuss it, but mm -hmm. – they're down to 1.38 million subscribers. Oh, dude, I went on a rant about it. During I know. The conference I, I heard call. you. I was shocked to hear that number. They're down nine percent in one quarter, and yep. that nine percent, I hit that fucking on the dot. First time you're gonna see me pat myself on the back here because I called that to a T saying that when NXT is no longer live, you're going to yep. lose a subsect of about 10% of your viewers who only got the network for NXT. I, I don't said think it wouldn't it's just be a, a mass amount, but you agreed. You know, we, we said it yeah. right then and there that there was going to be a good chunk of you know people that you know formed a mass exodus because they had no reason to continue watching when all they tuned in for was NXT. It wasn't going to be a million people, but 10%, that's 140,000. So we hit that Damn on the head. Well, they're 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 mistake they're on they're mistaken about how they don't understand that. I don't know why they don't understand this, but the more their TV audience goes down, the more obviously the network buys go down. Exactly, and 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 when you take uh, something that's exclusive to the network and put it out, I know it's on cable, but essentially for free. Why are people going to continue to subscribe? That's how we got into this conversation the other day. Well, saying, I will, but 
<laughs> like I, I'm the guy that will keep subscribing because well, I, I'm saying I have, if, if your main motivation is NXT, what are you going to subscribe for if they take it off the network? Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, for all the people that wanted to like, oh, I got to see what's going on. Well, once every three months the, you tune in for a takeover. That's is what it not, is: is the takeovers, they, and then you they, get the free month when you're returning. Well, and as soon as you unsubscribe, they send you an email. Here, we'll give you a free month. But that's why I said I, I didn't. I didn't even know if they would leave because again, they still get the takeovers on there. So I mean, they're just getting rid of the weekly program, which but they, was. But in but in one quarter, they were down nine percent, coinciding when NXT left the network. Yeah, and the other thing about that too is we we we'd always said like, oh, how many subscribers do they have? And we talked about it when they were at like two million. We thought yeah, they, we we were had a long discussion at that point. We were like, oh, they really yeah. Uh, like, could they get to 2.5 and 3? They really need to get to that. That That's what they wanted to get to. That's what they, like, projected. Like, we're going to have yes. 2.5 million people on the network by this time, or, or even 2 million. And as soon as they got to that goal, it dropped immediately. And now we're sitting here, holy shit, like, 1.3? Like, we, I mean, maybe you would have thought 1.7, 1.8. Like, you know, that's what I thought they were around. I mean, like, I, I'm not saying what I thought would happen, because this is what we thought would happen. But what I thought they were at, I thought we were maybe a little wrong, and you know they're probably at one point eight million. Holy yeah. fuck! They're they're, they're almost they're at way one. Down. They were they were you know at one point four, and that's they, being they generous. Have, they have what, they were 1. down 5. five million dollars from forty six point eight to forty one point six million in subscriber revenue. That's nuts, dude. And, and that's, the one point five is there's like two hundred. There's seventy thousand freeloaders right now, I believe. Seventy exactly. 000. And, and Vince does say that there's he expects this deal to be done before the end of the first quarter. He said as early as Q1 2020. That's before WrestleMania. Now, if they do that, by the way, stocks will go up. So, by the way, I mean, yeah, because it's more revenue generated. Yeah, like right, right. now, you're about to see stocks go down because people are like, what the fuck are they doing? We're out of here. So, like, if somebody, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm no fucking genius. I don't even have a high school diploma. But just for anybody who has stocks out there, I mean, get ready to, like, fucking, if you're in it for the long haul, I think you're going to see the stocks jump up. It, when they, it, when they announce Amazon or NBC, Peacock, or whatever it is that they announce that they're partnering with, I believe that would send the stocks up, I would think. So, yeah, and uh, but Vince but is basing off this reaction to the fact that Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor had 4.3 million buys that did 600 million in revenue. He's also uh, high on the fact of Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao did 4.6 million. That was 400 million in revenue. But if you look recently, this you know this year, something that you can actually you know tit for tat for with WWE, uh, Conor McGregor's return fight against you know Cowboy Cerrone. Only, I say only, but only did 1 million pay-per-view buys. That's still a strong, strong number, no doubt about it. But if the network's doing roughly 1.4 million subscribers, I, I don't feel that them transitioning to pay-per-view would, would help them. I don't no, see them getting no, 1.5 million buys. They're out of, they're, he's out of his mind. There's, the, there's no are, way people even I – I bet you even half of that is going to pay full price, especially buys, with the prevalence of, of – pirated streams Dude, at this point those buys are coming from middle upper middle class and and high middle class families those are coming from people like like the, those are coming from like 30 and 40 year old dudes who are like those are coming from buffalo wild wings and hooters that and too, I well, guarantee that too. they're not counting that well it's not even that i'm not even counting Forty thousand restaurant establishments uh, you know alone are probably uh, for each establishment are not factored into that goddamn number i guarantee that uh, the, well, the highest majority is is uh business and not consumer well yeah i mean there's a lot of businesses but th that's not even what i'm talking about fuck the businesses get rid of the business it's still three and a half million people buying it like it's well, well it's the just, most recent one was only one million buys it's for, but, for Oh, okay. Return well, fight. But but it's got it's guys who are in their 30s and 40s. It's like so that's dudes. 400 thousand people. Then if you take away the businesses, you think so? Yeah, absolutely. I you mean, know I know there's a lot of establishments at the pay per view just nationwide. Yeah, but we're talking about millions of people. You think you think a million? You think like they did mean, one million? There's sales not even that many restaurants. Pay per view. One million people. One million sales for the pay per view was how it worked out. Well, uh, what, uh, what I can say is this: N nobody's fucking like. Out of so so, if you have a hundred people who are about to stream a pay per view fight of some kind, ninety of them will stream MMA or a boxing match. Only ten of them would stream a wrestling event. No wrestling events barely. You have to like search to find someplace broadcasting a pay per view of wrestling. Like even on the network, even a restaurant to put the network on or something, they don't even even if it was pay per view, the restaurants still don't do it. 
You know what I mean? Uh, so like, the restaurants, uh, majority of them showed the UFC fight. That's not WWE they, though. Uh, no, not WWE, but I'm saying yeah. UFC. That's why they want to go ahead and, and, and try and uh, they do show WrestleMania. It's a good good majority. WrestleMania, does show WrestleMania yeah, but almost but, nothing. But not every single no, not fight in and fight out. Just select establishments. But the most recent number I have is from 2015. You know, there's 600 company owned. That's company, not individual owned. There's only 660,000. There's only 660,000 restaurants in the country. Yeah. So what and, I'm and, saying and, is, but each one, it counts for each TV that they buy it on as a package. But they're only buying it on one TV and they're fucking, and they're, they're mirroring Each one it. they show it on, they have to charge for. That's it. That's why it ends up being, if you rent it, it's like $2,000 Are for you your sure it's not a mirror? They're not mirroring the coax No, cable? you have to buy, when we did it at the restaurant here, you have to buy a licensing deal and the pay-per-view ends up costing anywhere from like two to $5,000. It's insane. What? And yeah, because you're making money off of showing their pay-per-view. So you have to license it from them. And for every TV it's shown on, they have to go ahead and they, they, they adjust their fees. Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, are you no. sure? But are all restaurants really doing that? I mean, uh, a majority I mean, of them are showing Joe's bar, you know, sports, sports bar bars and things like Joe's that. Joe's sports showing, bar isn't just clicking on the pay per view button and having a it's cable illegal box. to do that if you're making if you're if you're having any cover or uh, I there's a whole thing with the FTC they can't just go ahead right and and show the fight if if it's right. a pay per view because you could just I, I don't be like the legality you could just it, tell right? your whole neighborhood hey come over to my house uh, it's fifteen bucks a person and then yeah, show that, it you, you can't but well, you're not supposed to make money off of it either that's that's considered well I mean you can have out. people over your house but yeah I know what you're yes, saying because it's the same thing as being like hey come to my if stream. I sold tickets for everybody to come to my house and watch WrestleMania I would get hit as well if it, if I was discovered yeah right it's the same idea you, that you know but. Um, it, it is interesting how it how it works out. It's it's peculiar with the FTC and the fines and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I get it. It's weird, but I mean, all right. So, but I'm talking about like, per, but they're not registering. Like you're you're telling me that they're registering every TV as a buy. Yes. So, I, I'm trying to think. Like, I mean, even then, still, like, let's say out of the 660 thousand restaurants in the country. I would say I could walk into most restaurants right now. They're not playing pay-per-views. Al yeah. Almost, like, I would say only 20%. Uh, uh, the sports bars, definitely, but no, right. not all restaurants. So Absolutely. I would I say... I see your point. I'd go 20% of 660,000. So that's like, I'd say 250,000 bars across the um, America. And if maybe. they're all playing at two TVs, that's right. half a million right there. So maybe... Maybe half a million. I would go. Yeah, I would. Maybe yeah, so some my, of them have my, seven TVs. You know, some of them have fucking ten. Well, yeah, TVs. and it said right here for the Pacquiao fight when he took on Mayweather. Uh, I have a direct quote: "Prices are determined according to the fire code for your establishment. If your restaurant holds two hundred people, the event costs six thousand five hundred dollars to rent. If your Jesus. establishment holds five hundred people, it costs fifteen thousand five hundred dollars. Each establishment was given a program that offers different price ranges, and they adjust it by the fire code limit into your restaurant." What the fuck? Are you fucking? That's crazy for restaurants. So owners. that's directly from Deadspin. I mean, it shows the breakdown. So if a 200 capacity bar buys the fight, it would need to pack the house, and then have each patron spend at least $32 or, uh, dollars in order to break in. And that's setting aside the bar's usual expenses just to pay off the pay-per-view. That's why they only do the big fights. That's why they don't do every WrestleMania. And pay-per-view cops are paid by the number of legal locations they find. So they just pay normal citizens as pay-per-view cops. And for each location they find breaking these TOS, you know, TOS terms of service, Excuse me, these cops get two hundred fifty dollars per location. Oh, that's it, man. Give me like two thousand bucks. Well, if you found ten places that are airing if you drove around your your you know local area and you said, Hey, look, there's ten bars that aren't paying, you know, the 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 fee, you just made twenty five hundred dollars for a night. I guess. Yeah, that's we'll talk about and the, the so they actually hire their own pay per view cops. The ultimate narc. <laughs> um, let me uh, let me play a donation here real quick. What's up, everybody in the chat? How you guys doing? Um, hope you guys uh, check out the uh, super chats down below. We're gonna answer some super chats. Uh, donation, regular donations work. Streamlabs down below. Twitch alerts, all that bullshit. Then way at the bottom of the description box, all the donation amounts are listed. I believe. Don't forget the new eleven fifty. The new eleven dollar and fifty second Joe Mega uh, donation is there for you if you guys would like. The belt is back tonight. We're going to put someone up here to win this digital championship. It's back, baby. It's back. And I want to also say that me and Jake are going to be wrapping up on a post show after this. 
um, bringing you over to the post show, answering the Patreon questions that are up already there. So look for that. Also, shout out to Junebug, who became a $25 producer. Thanks to Junebug and uh, Shy God, who became a $25 producer as well. Thank you, Shy God. Anybody else who wants to sign up to be a producer, it's patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Ooh. Will you be my Valentine? Huh? That's right. It's Valentine's Day. I haven't gotten anything for Leah yet. That's bad. That creeped up on me. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna have to get her my my Johnson. Uh, Wandy, thank you, Wandy man. I made Courtney a card. <laughs> oh, did you? I think I want to take her out to eat, maybe or something. Maybe. I want you with the three bucks. You'll get your name on the list there. You don't want to be on the list. You want to be in the list because it's female. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Uh, Awandi, man. What's up, Awandi? Glad you... Super What's up? Chat <clears throat> party. As I die. Shout out to Sexy Jake. We got a great show coming your way tomorrow at 7 p.m. And a shout out to the Jace ES Army that have been helping spread the pod around. What's up, baby? Thank you, man. We'll look for that tomorrow for the NXT deal. Uh, Spaz... Phoenix. Spaz. Thank you, man. Spaz Phoenix Podcast on uh, Spotify and wherever podcasts are found. Uh, $5 Canadian. Thank you, sir. Love the Canadian. Spaz Phoenix is going to try to butt fuck Jake DeMarco tomorrow on that show. No uh, lube Valentine's Day. Yeah, that's a little weird, you know? Yeah. You probably should be out with a girl, but sure, if you want to talk wrestling on Valentine's Day, fine, you gay. Uh, but no, uh, yeah, so you, so there was three million buys. I mean, you're talking about, a, sure, a half a million maybe coming from these No, there's only bars. one million buys. Okay, but I mean, if there was three million, because one, of, oh, them, yeah, one, if, one of them one of them was three million, wasn't there? The Pacquiao fight. Yeah, so the Pacquiao fight. Dude, four million. That's dudes. That's like guys in their homes, like fucking being like, yo, come over, everybody. Well, and that was like, shown more nationwide, too, than this UFC fight. Right. But I mean, so, it's, I mean it's, 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 it's still kind of. The wrestling community is not, that's, there's not, they don't well, have the to, money. To give you perspective here, you know, when UFC agreed to have all of their pay-per-views shown exclusively on ESPN+, Plus, that, that was a $1.5 billion deal. You know, uh, that, that was fruitful for Bob Iger with, you know, Disney and uh, obviously the UFC as well. But it also helped ESPN+, Plus because they went up uh, almost a little over 500,000 new subscribers. So now they're up to 7.6 million total subscribers. So Vince hears this and he's like, oh shit, if I can go ahead and do this, you know, if we get 2 million buys, that's a hundred million dollars in revenue. We can go ahead and, 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 you know, have this happen for us. You're, you're looking at like the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight. If that gets 2 million buys, that's a hundred million dollars in revenue. And they're expecting that to do about the same. So problem is, is that Vince is only looking, I guess at this point to sell the big four pay-per-views. But maybe that's the way to go. You know, you just sell the, the, the main four or the big four and then you, you have everything else on the network because there still has to be some type of substance besides the back catalog to keep the network being relevant. If they get rid of every pay-per-view, there's no way someone's paying $60 again to watch Hell in a Cell, to watch Backlash, to watch, uh, you know, Extreme Rules. It's not happening. There's no way. Yeah, I mean, even, like, what was it, a few years back? Even before before the network, wasn't the last WrestleMania buy? We could probably look this up. I'm making this up off my For head. For WrestleMania 29? I think it's 780,000 buys. I know it's way less than that. Really? Oh, way less. What? I think it's like 300,000, three or 400,000. I mean, before the network? I thought... Yeah, before, before, before the... Uh, oh, my God. I thought it was 700,000 before the network. I know. That was... that was one, uh, 29 was 1 million. So there, okay. there was one that was really down low. Maybe it was two years before that. Um, 29 was the sixth highest grossing. I think it was maybe one or two before that that were really, really low. Um... Because that was the return uh, that was that had the rock and stuff like that. So that was, I think it was twenty six, maybe. I know one of them before that started to really drop off, and that was their worry. But yeah, they started to drop consistently at one point, and that was their worry. So um, let's see here. They have a list of all pay per view buy rates. Well, I, I I'm glad we have the buy rates. Uh, but no, it's just it's cra it's crazy, man. That that 
Um, the numbers are, are, are wild. And, and I know that one of the things, too, is there's, a, there's some new fans, there's some casual fans, but then there's a lot of fans now that are, you know, they're just used to what, they're, they're just used to the network now. They're used to paying what they're paying. Because we said this when this happened, that it was like, I mean, this is incredible that we're able to go on the WW network and, you know, for like nine bucks a month, we get everything. It just seemed crazy because it's so backwards before that to pay 50, 60, whatever dollars um, a month. And I always said that it'd be nice if there was something in the middle, like, cause most people are not going to be able to buy 12 pay-per-views a year. They're going to be able to buy one maybe, and maybe two or three if they're going nuts. But also that a lot of times what happens is they're just going to steal it. They're just going to watch it some on some stream, some feed somewhere. And the less, in, the less interest there is, the more they're going to just find it on some, on some stream somewhere. Yeah, because they're not going to be like, oh, let me, you know what I mean? Let me pay this when I can just find it. But if you had a nine dollar option, you know what I mean? So you're giving people a nine or ten dollar. Let's say it's ten bucks, pretty much. It's a ten dollar option to not only watch the live upcoming pay per view, but you get access to everything ever done in the history of WWE, and then and then some with other companies and other pasts of WCW and things like that. So it's yeah. like that's incredibly insane compared to oh, there's no network, you have to buy everything on DVD or Blu-ray and buy 50, 60, 70, 80 dollar pay-per-views. It's such it's the opposite swing that it always felt like they jumped the gun somewhere in the, like somewhere in the middle. There's a middle ground somewhere that they're missing. Yeah, that they didn't they didn't fully go ahead and benefit from Which, the I mean, digital revolution to us because you always but... got more uh, bang for your buck. And the lowest they went for Mania was five hundred sixty thousand buys. Uh, right. Tick back up, then drop back down, and then twenty eight topped off at one hundred and two uh, one million two hundred fifty three thousand. Right. The last one before the network was a million forty eight. So not bad there. Uh, national buys ended up being five hundred seventy nine thousand. So with international totals, uh, it ended up being a million forty eight. That's crazy. But yeah, I mean, when you when you look through it all, um, and especially with how pay per view has, you know, changed as time has gone on, I, I find it difficult for them to go ahead and, and really garner that type of you know sixty dollar price tag being so prevalent once again. I just don't see it hitting. Yeah, I don't. I just don't. And I don't see it working nowadays. I mean, you're gonna. If get... you look at the numbers pre network for everything that isn't the big four, right? One hundred ninety nine thousand. 169,000, like Breaking Point was at 169,000. Hell in a Cell did only 200,000. Uh, you know, right right the year before the, uh, the actual network launched, pay-per-views did 196, 213, 199, 200, 175. I, the only thing I see breaking over uh, 300,000, of course, happens to be Royal Rumble at Five hundred seventy-nine thousand, and then the million for Mania. Nothing else breaks three hundred thousand. So they weren't doing well at all with pay-per-view buys. Rumble and Mania were the only two that did marketably well. Right. But I just don't foresee them, you know, being able to charge these these high exorbitant prices once again and have it be as fruitful as it once was for them. Yeah, I, I, I don't – right now things are going down. I really think the most important thing for them – I mean, it's easy for me to look at stuff. I don't know a damn thing. I'm not in the company. I don't know the logistics of what's going on, what the plans are in the future, and all that stuff. We have no idea. But, I mean, just to me, it seems like the number one thing is do better content, like make yeah, better content. Yeah, they have a tiered system, like you said. Offer a free system that gives, like, the, uh, the ride-alongs and things like that. You know the the simple stuff. Who watches those? I mean, like, there's I, there's a very small really? audience for those. You know, that's that's probably the same people that tune into backstage and stuff like that. But I, have that offered, and then do a, the regular network we have now for ten dollars, and then double the price to include all pay per views. Well, let me go uh, real quick back to the donation, and we'll see what's up. <laughs> Scratched cornea sucks. Happened to me years ago. His sword got too close to my eye and I didn't put my shield up fast enough to block. I didn't. Oh my God. Will Tactics, thank you for the donation, man. Wow. I mean, you really got to look out for those swords, man. You got to look out for those swords. What's up, Michael? Michael was looking for the epic out of nowhere. That was uh, from two weeks ago, I believe. Two weeks ago. Yes. I, I guess I got to remember to try to stay on late. Stay on until 3 a.m. Then people start donating 
hundreds and thousands of dollars. Like, it, <laughs> just wait till 3 a.m. and then people just like, I'm drunk and I got a wallet. You know, this will just like, let's give money to this this pubic haired face idiot. Um, and no, we're ready to chime in. What's up, Mad Moon? How you doing, man? Good to hear from you. And um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to keep getting to. I mean, we could really break this down forever, but it really, bottom line to me, comes down to this: your viewership has gone down three million to two point eight million to two point five million to two point three million, and now the norm is basically two point three to two million. We're around yeah. two million, like somewhere. SmackDown gets two point four. Raw seemingly seems to get around two point two. NXT is in that seven hundred thousand line. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's pretty much their their uh, you know standard viewership at this point in time. The thing is, Raw for for as much as everyone seemingly shits all over it, Raw doubles in that you know sweet eighteen to whatever demographic that there is so highly sought after. They double the amount of of viewers that AEW gets in that demographic. Right. So when people say WWE isn't reaching out to the younger audience, they definitely are. Yeah, 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 and and I don't think a lot of people say, "Oh, only AEW is reaching to the younger's, you know, the younger crowd." No, I that's think, not the case at all. WWE I, has them beat twofold. No, I think WWE is reaching out to the two younger crowd because no one's. I don't think they're getting enough of those kids. Yeah, and, I mean, maybe not enough of the young ones as they used to, but that eighteen to thirty graphic, whatever the, you know demographic they want, that's so sought after, they're doubled compared to what uh, AEW gets on Wednesdays. So. What? Wait a but minute. What? Or oh, the WWE? AEW, double? you know, I, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but WWE is for Raw is doubling the amount of that demographic compared to AEW. Raw is doubling the eighteen to thirty demo. Yeah, that is surprising. Raw, get, Raw gets double the amount that AEW gets, but everyone seemingly says, "Oh, AEW is is getting more young viewers to to tune in." Well, isn't AEW getting the old crowd, like older people? No, NXT seemingly gets the older crowd. Oh, right. Okay. Like, because I saw that, like, the 50 year olds are watching NXT. Yeah, and that's AW. NXT has it in with, you know, seniors. <laughs> wow. That's wild, man. That is so weird. Um, so, but, but with all the talk of scalpers, tickets not selling well, uh, you know, lo and behold, we, we start to hear, because originally they had no plans for The Undertaker at WrestleMania. This, this happened last year. We, we seemingly heard that was going to be the same. Well, now things are changing. They're bringing back Goldberg. Uh, John Cena has is going to return to SmackDown in two weeks. He'll be there to announce that he'll be at Mania. You know, it, it, things are, are taking shape now so that they can really go ahead. And if they are going to sell this elsewhere, they want to make it the biggest show possible for people to go ahead and buy the pay-per-view for WrestleMania. Therefore, you're hearing John Cena might be taking on Goldberg. You're hearing, uh, you know, obviously that The Undertaker will take on AJ Styles. Right. It's it's just, you know, they're trying to come up with as many dream match scenarios as possible to get people to fork over their money. I'll fork it over. We'll see if it works or not, but, um, you know, it, it is interesting. And come to find out, you know, our, our worry was that we, we don't want to see Goldberg beat The Fiend to go on to take on Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. You know, we, we had heard that that might be a considered route at one point in time but according to several you know sites today it said that um you know it, it's revealed that goldberg had uh basically been willing to go on and lose the match the, the, the tentative idea now is that the bout should ideally be about a brief two-minute contest and the end will be with the fiend having his arm raised so it'll be a short sweet concise match where the fiend looks extremely dominant and Goldberg's willing to put the fiend over, I mean, which is good. Of course, I mean, like well, that's got to be what they're doing going into WrestleMania. And I pre, we'd like to hope, but a, I mean, yeah. it is worrisome that I could see anything for Roman, and and essentially, in a casual sense, the bigger match might have been to have Goldberg face Roman Reigns. But even Roman Reigns came out in interview and outright said, "I'd rather face the fiend than Goldberg." He's like, "No knock to Goldberg, he's great." But the Fiend's here. He's had a great year. He's done incredible things for this business, and it's his time. You yeah, know? I mean, Gold dude, like, I mean, you don't want to – listen, Goldberg is clearly here just, like, enhance the Fiend, help him out. You know, they've helped Goldberg. He's come back. They've given him something special with his son and all this other stuff. It's like he – I'm sure he – now he probably wants to give back, and that's what he's like. Hey, let me come in. I'll make it. I'm Goldberg. Here I come. And then the Fiend runs you over and makes you that and more And he'll threaded. make a shit ton of money being in Saudi, so – can't oh man, about I, that I, keep, as well. I keep forgetting it's in Saudi too. Yeah, that's even, and then and they need to sell that deal. 
Yeah. So, the, you know, obviously the Saudi crowd also is really high on Legends. They apparently are only up to 2003 in their current viewing of WWE product. So, oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they're just getting to the ruthless aggression spot. I mean, when now. you ask for the Macho Man and Ultimate Warrior, fucking, and, it's and Yoko Zuna or whatever. We're crazy saying that stuff, but. Good to me have Yoko Zuna. Um, what's up, Michael? How you doing, Miguel, in the chat? How you doing, man? Buenos noches, senor. How you doing tonight, my friend? Um, so there was another thing. Uh, JR got criticism the other day, which, I mean, rightfully so. I mean,. There's part of me that I don't know what to tell you about this because obviously I make mistakes. I've made mistakes when I've done commentary and I've made mistakes with a lot of things. And um, I'll tell you, man, it sucks when everybody's criticizing you. It does because and we and we it's our job to criticize people here. I think it's okay to criticize people and to make jokes and things like that. I don't think that's a problem as long as you're not like, you know, doing full like, you know, one hour bashings on Jim Ross for all his problems. I mean, like that that gets to be a little tough, I guess. I know JR's just got to silence it and just deal with it. He made some mistakes. You know, it is what it is. But he did make some pretty hilarious mistakes. I mean... Yeah, saying that we'll see you Monday in Atlanta instead of Wednesday. We'll see you Monday in Atlanta. And an hour through AEW, he said, we're about to take our last commercial break. Yeah. You know, he's, he's... I mean, um... I, mean, I I didn't view it as him being disrespectful. The, the King of the Mountain thing, I, I don't quite... See the knock there. I don't. I don't get why that would be so offensive. Maybe I'm an idiot, but I don't know. It says following Nile Rose big win on AEW Dynamite this week. She was overcome with emotion as Rose held up the AEW Women's Championship high. Jim Ross said Nyla Rose is king of the mountain. Oh, because you said king. I, I we Becky Lynch is calling herself the man. Like I I, I fail to understand what's the negative connotation in this you know then they went to commercial and people were like oh it's a transgender knock and and jr said you know vehemently over and over again i appreciate your timely criticism but it's called human error hopefully you will never experience such an issue um you know uh, another fan said i do believe that jim ross is a kind individual who would never intentionally misgender a trans person on national tv uh they said i sincerely hope that it was a simple slip of the tongue which could have been any woman not particular to Nyla Rose. That would be cruel. And, you know, he, he agreed. He said, you're right. And, you know, it's called human error. I agree like that sentiment entirely. I don't picture JR being like, oh, you, you know, you're transitioning. Let's let's knock you down a peg. He doesn't even know people's names. You know, he, <laughs> he forgets who's who, what's being said. It's ridiculous, you know, but he is such a legend that it, it's hard to to not want him there at the same time. For every you know Freudian slip he has, he's got some great moments as well. So he sounds miserable at times, yes, but other times he's still he's still great. You know, I I I don't I don't see how this is a huge deal, and I don't again find much fault in this. I mean. It would be different if it was like that guy just became women's champion. This is a you know that would be an issue. That would that would you know cause a shitstorm, justifiably so. But with this saying like, oh, you're king of the mountain, you're king of the world, you're top of the you know food chain. I, I people could have the sad part is if he said, oh, you're you're queen of the kingdom now, you, there would have been some trans or you know LGBTQ community member saying, oh, queen like a drag queen, you know, oh, you're, so. There's always going to be a, a, a mislabeling of such, and that's the issue. The people are never going to be happy. That's that's all it comes down to. They they were going to, you know, I feel, find something to be outraged about. How about just celebrate the fact that you have a transgender women's champion? The AEW was progressive enough to acknowledge that this individual is, is uh, in their eyes, talented enough to be in the ring and earn the title. Focus on that. Celebrate the fact, you know, you, you should be putting this person on a pedestal instead of surrounding yourself with all the negativity and trying to cancel someone in the meantime. I, and I get that, but, you know, there, there's so much to it. Yes, she is a man, and, and Becky Lynch calls herself the man. But, but no, I mean, it's, it's identify as you want, say as you feel. That's all it should be. Tessa, exactly, is TNA's world champion at this point in time. Get over it. That's what I say. It's just, it's ridiculous. People are looking to be offended in my eyes. Look at what happened to uh, Jim Carrey when he was being interviewed for uh, the Sonic movie right now. There's there's a huge backlash going on because um, 
he, he started to come under fire when a simple interviewer went ahead and said, you know, what's next after you've accomplished so much? You know, you had a bucket list for this. And uh, in the Sonic film, Sonic has a bucket list. I was wondering, after all you've done in your career and in your life, is there anything still left on your bucket list? And he said, just you. That's it. It's all done now. And she laughed, saying, I don't know what to say to that. Are you are you kidding me? Like that's that's what people are offended by saying that he's misogynistic, and a pig and and a sleaze bag, and that that was unacceptable. You know, he said, "Just you, you know, like like you're the last interview, you know that that's what it, just accept it." But again, the whole scroll culture, cancel culture, you know, they'll find something else to be outraged about before the night is over. But just hearing him get torn apart for this is is absolutely ridiculous. Um, Whoa. He, he, with Jim Carrey. What? No, I I heard about the Sonic movie, but I don't know where would the what did he do? He was in an interview, and the interviewer, a female, went ahead and said, "You know, Sonic's got a bucket list. Is there anything left on your bucket list?" And he said, "Just you. That's it. It's all done now." And she laughs, Whoa. and she's like, "I don't know what to say to that." And he's like, "Just own it, you know." And people are like, "Oh, he's a sleaze bag. He's misogynistic. This is unacceptable." But you know How what? Dare you? you know what? That's awesome because Jim Carrey has been the biggest virtue signaling SJW for the last two years. So that's actually hilarious. Yeah, and the, like you said, they, they always eat they, they eat their, their own. own. They eat their own. Listen, they always do. Jim Carrey, it's not surprising. Jim, Jim Carrey has been ranting about SJWs and Trump and all these things for two years now, and now they're coming for him. How hilarious is that? I mean, dude, just stop. Stop but, virtue but talk signaling. About to get a goddamn life. I mean, he he literally, all he said was, you know, just you. That's it. He was referring to the interview being on the bucket list and referring to the journalist. And people are like, oh my god. Well, I mean, that's a I weird. Don't... That's like a weird sexual. Like, it's like, oh, just just you. And now, now the other interview is like, ha ha. Well, after he went through, I think sixteen different interviews in the same, you know, press junket. She's the last one. Yeah, I get you it. Know, I get if it. you look at it's it, it's not a big context, deal. It's not a, it's not a big deal. But it's just funny because just, just like the King of the Mountain comment is not a big deal. I didn't even understand what there was offensive about it. You know, Jim Carrey is somebody who's been calling people out for this type of stuff and shitting on people, and now like they're coming for him. It's just so funny to watch people. It's like, dude, does it did. This is when, you know when people say, did you listen to history? Did you watch history? History repeats itself. This is the witch trials. This is our version of the witch trials. Back in the day, everybody wanted to point at a witch or point at a woman and say she's a witch or whatever because you didn't want to be called a witch, basically, and because you thought something was crazy or whatever, and it's a witch hunt. That, that's, what, that's, what, that's what everything is now. There's a lot of people that get called out that deserve it, and thank God we can police ourselves. You know, if somebody's harassing a woman for real or something, we can call it out and, you know, really get it, you know, out there so they're in trouble. But little stupid things like this, I mean, what the hell's wrong with everybody, man? Like, I mean, it's, come on, bro. Like, I'm ridiculous. telling you, um, it's it's nauseating. That's for sure. This is it, the, it this is, is. It's just it's maddening. This is it's, what, it's it's a simple joke. People take things out of context, and I can understand if he was if he was like your vagina. Now that's what's on my bucket because, list. Well, but, but you understand. Well, yeah, I know that's that's even wackier. But that's funny too. But. You got to also understand again that there's a sensitivity because right now with the whole like the Me Too thing that happened and the sensitivity of you know guys creeping on women in a certain way using their power because he's a powerful guy, he's an entertainer, he's a very rich man sitting there with an interviewer trying to get her job done. Maybe she makes fifty k, I don't know, hundred k, who knows what she makes a year. And now he's like, oh, you're you're the one left. It's like what what is she supposed to say? But like, who cares? That's not a big deal to me. But I get the I get the perception because and, of how the, and the biggest proponent of the Me Too movement ends up being found to be a man beater. You know, gotta love that. Yeah, the, it's all fake. It's all bullshit. Amber Heard. Uh, oh my God, I was so abused, and then no, the reality comes out. Eighty-seven videos. Uh, you know, something something like hundreds of recordings of all the times that she attacked him. And they have all this full deposition worth of hours and hours and hours of evidence of her being just outright abuseful, emotionally, physically, mm. verbally, you name it. But she was attacked. Look at um, Cornette. <laughs> Cornette's gone from uh, NWA. And, and you know what the funny part is? And he's right about that as well with Cornette. You know, they chose to leave that in because they didn't think it would be a big deal. It's a tape show. They knew he said it. They heard it again in editing, in post, and before it got put up on YouTube. You know, uh, what's his name, Langan or whatever. You know, they they decided to, to keep it in. 
And then when all this happens, instead of saying like, oh, we're sorry, we didn't think it'd be a big deal, that's why we decided to leave it in, they throw him under the bus saying that he's the worst thing ever, and uh, no, we, we need to get rid of him. It's like, fuck you, you know, here, you, it's something that could have been changed so many times, and when you look at the whole thing, it, it was a simple comparison of something that's actually not so much topical, but realistic. Yeah, I mean... um, let me go to the donations because I don't know. <laughs> then we'll get back to the next. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, wrestling news, but let me jump over to the donations. What here. else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, I do. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Riho got pushed because she was getting demolished in the back by Omega. Oh, the two white on. trophy is actually Car Sogis' head. Man will have an under. What the hell? Did the donation just stop reading? Um, that was weird. I don't know why it just stopped reading. Um, but thank you, the goon with three dollars. Super showdown events. The Undertaker. I don't. I don't know why that donation just died like that. I was like, but it just died. Oh my god, I'm so fucking horny. Oh my god, I'm goon, so thank fucking you, horny. Goon. Oh my god, I'm so fucking horny. Happy fucking birthday. Oh my god, so fucking horny. Oh my god, so horny. Oh my god, so horny. Happy birthday. Oh, honey, honey, honey. Donation, oh, is, donation. What the hell? Time, time. Put it in my round bum. Wow, I mean, what kind of show are we running here? What type of show yeah. is this right now? I'm sorry. Black yeah. Lab 27 with a donation. <laughs> Is this what you want? All this Joe and Jake in all their glory hole? Is oh. this what you want, Mr. Dibbs? Oh, Black Lab 27, thank you for the uh, $16 donation and whatever the hell that is. Uh, my God, good God, what is happening in this? <laughs> Black Lab 27, what up, man? Just good like, here, man. you know, Malaysia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, Pakistan... I forget where the hell else they all banned Valentine's Day. They really? considered a cultural threat from the West. They did? Yeah, they, they banned uh, Valentine's Day this year under the threat of law. Yeah. What? They, they view it as a uh, cultural onslaught from the West. Who? It's corrupting the Iranian youth. Oh. And they've tried to prevent it for many years, but all these different countries have outright banned Valentine's Day. If your shop is caught selling anything, including red balloons, Red roses, candies tied with ribbons, chocolate, bears with hearts or in their chest or anything, uh, your shop will be closed. And anyone it? peddling Valentine's Day items in the streets will be arrested as well. Can we ban it here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, um, I, I, they're, I get it. They're scared of our the culture stuff. I mean, we're all the same. You know, we're scared well, of their culture. That, they're scared that, of our that culture. That just piggybacks onto all of the incel, you know, outspoken individuals and on social media and SJWs that don't want it to exist either. So it's it's hmm. pretty amusing. That is weird. Um, I mean, I got to figure something out for tomorrow for my uh, for my wife. So I got eight <laughs> cents. So go with go with my route. Make a card. Make a card. <laughs> all right. Well, fuck you. I'll buy you something. I'll fucking you, you make a card and you fucking make it from the heart. I, I do make the cards a lot of times. They, they like she likes the cards. I think. And then and then you go ahead and you uh you know you put it in after. But oh <laughs> yeah, um what what other uh, why do you always offer a full body massage on Valentine's Day? I'll rub anything. You, know? you want me to rub something? What do you think about the referees last night, man? I really couldn't get over those referees. How do you feel about like the uh, animation? for a show that is praised unanimously as the best episode of AEW to date, the highest rated episode from fans and reviewers alike? Really, last Sur night? Yeah, surprisingly enough, panned. Critically, you know, panned as the best episode they've had to date. I mean, it's one of the best. One Cody of the best ones. It's, involved. I agree. It's one of the best ones. One of the Their better referees ones. Referees leave so much to be desired. They don't know who's legal for tag matches. They're intrusive and and obstructive in pivotal moments when certain things are about to happen. I feel like they're always in the way. Uh, you notice when the, you know it's not the end of a match because you get a very, very, very slow, long two count. You know, there's a, there's a lot of little things that just turn into issues. And it's not like we're nitpicking because that was one of the big sentiments coming out of last night that I picked up on social media. People were uh, not too thrilled with some of the uh, referees' performances. So it, it's um, where's the video? I gotta find it. Of the, I, I have to get a video of this guy. What is his name? Bryce or something? He's a, probably a great guy. But um, when he comes in there to count, I mean, the guy is hilarious. Like, he's 
He jumps up like in the air almost. Yeah, Bryce Remsburg and uh, obviously Aubrey Edwards is the other one. But she's a little. She's here. She's a little weird too sometimes. But uh, but he was so weird last night. Where, where I gotta pull this up because it's just so funny. I gotta find a clip of it. I could probably play a clip, a little quick clip of him doing it. But he would do this thing where he just he just jumps up in the air to count and like it's like this over exaggerated ridiculous count that he does and it's enraging to watch i'll find it in a minute i'm looking through right now and i'll I'll eventually get to it he jumps up in the air like a ballet dancer i mean like this is i'm going full cornet on this one he jumps up in the air like a fucking ballet dancer and comes down like he just fucking like should have a tutu on or something and then starts this ridiculous over exaggerated count he reacts to everything in the ring even a clothesline like he just looks like he's scared of everything that's going on i mean it's it's so it's so wild man but um real quick yeah, they, um, they, they said that he looked like Cesaro <laughs> point leaping around it's the just ring. it's just <laughs> hilarious to watch he's a great guy he's a really he's a good ref when m- most of the time it just seemed it was just really funny last night i noticed it it was bizarre to me and I think Jake, we have someone on the phone right now. This is good. this isn't a regular caller. This is, I believe, Thunder Rosa. What's up, Thunder Rosa? Man, I am allowed to like slap my dog silly. He's acting a fool right now. I'm great though. I'm alive. Well, hey, you, yeah. Hi. How are you feeling? My goodness. Thank you for for calling in. We saw the news. We're so sorry to hear everything that happened. How are you feeling? Um, you know, it's it's, it's funny because I'm like numb right now. I'm like. I was talking to one of my. I went to training today because, like, it, I think it, we. I was. I got really scared because it was in the middle of the night, and my husband was the one who got hit more than I did. Cause it, it was on the passenger side, oh. and we were so lucky that. Um, I mean, I think this guy hit like three other people, and we were the last ones to be hit. Wow! <laughs> so, wow. Terrible. Yeah. Was he I mean, drunk or something? Yeah. I mean, you know. I- there no, you know, no, no real serious injuries in the sense that you know, obviously cars and, and vehicles, things like that, can be replaced. But you, you and your husband are okay, thankfully. No, yeah, it was it was crazy because like he saw he saw his life pass by because I, I literally was like he told me to slow down and as soon as I looked at the car that's when I like put the brakes because I know it was gonna hit us straight. Um, I just like I was completely numb, like I didn't know what to think or what was happening. I was just kind of like in shock, and like I was like not aware of like nothing. You know, I was like, if I die, at least I die with my partner. That's what I thought. It was crazy. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a little, not a little, it was very scary because, um, because the cars just keep coming. Nobody will stop, you know, and there was no shoulder. There was like nothing. So I was just kind of like, this is my first, this is like my first time that I get into a, like a serious accident like that. Did he cross over the, um, he crossed over the median, like on the highway or what was it? No, we're on the freeway. It was like two freeways are merging into one. Mm-hmm. So we are on like all the way uh, close to the um, the wall. The like literally the um, yeah the cement separa- what is it, the the separator. Shoulder, or whatever. The shoulder is very very small. Like maybe half of your car can fit in right. or less. So there's no space to go anywhere, and we were on that line. So how bad is like how bad's the car? Is it like com- like wrecked or is it? Uh, it's, not, it's not totaled, but you know the damages are probably. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of money. We, we, I mean, we got stuck on the freeway. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, like the yeah. the car is very important to wrestler, especially wrestler like you. So, like that's why I see like you posted on Twitter. You know, you're selling some gear, you're selling some ring gear. So you, you know, you got the T-shirts. There's a new NWA Power T-shirt. So, but it's an NWA Thunder, and there's the three R's, which is really funny. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm selling all this stuff because, like, I don't want to do GoFund, you know, because I think I can still, you know, sell memorabilia and stuff. I mean, the the yeah. gear I wanted to sell, it, but I think now I have to sell it because, um, you know, I mean, this is an extra expense that I was not expecting. And I'm still traveling in Texas, you know, to, like, do photo shoots that, again, will, you know, help support my family and stuff. Um, right. and, and, you know, the, the only time that I ask for money is for, like, if I'm doing a fundraiser for a, for a nonprofit and yeah. um, like some people have come to me and like, Hey, I want to give you money. And I feel bad about taking money. Like I'll send you something, you know, but um, you know, it, it's just like, I have insurance, but again, my insurance is so expensive in Texas. Again, because people can't drive and the good drivers like me, we end up paying the bill. Right. So um, I don't know what's going to be the situation and where I'm going to end up paying more 
because like somebody was uninsured, you know, so it's, it's kind of tricky, but I'd rather do it, you know, um, out of pocket. It's going to take me a little while, but I want to make sure that my car, I won't have any issues in the future. Like because on the side where the, um, where the tire is on the passenger side, that's where it got dented. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, the, absolutely. The second, the so they're gonna have to remove that, and like literally, probably they're gonna have to, because um, it's the whole entire passenger side, the one that got messed up. So that's why I was really scared because my husband was on the passenger side, and yeah. he hit himself. He hit himself in the head while um, the other car hit us. And like the sad part is not even like the accident itself is like these people, whoever they were, I don't know who they were. Yeah, they left their bumper with no license. Not even they were even lucky on that, and just drove off. Wow, they so didn't even care if it was good or like nothing. It was like they drove off, and I'm like holding on to gear alive on the steering wheel as my husband is like call the police, and I'm looking at them driving off. I didn't get a chance to like write in our license plates. I was just thinking in my head, who in the right mind would just leave two human beings that just got into an accident and can possibly hit by three other eight, eighteen wheelers just waiting here? And then you just leave there, and you don't give a shit about their life. That's crazy. That, that it's. I mean, was they were they drunk or something? And did they find anything out about that? No, nothing. Like, it's, I mean, I made the police report and everything, but they, they didn't find them. It was a Pontiac. They, they left they still, the, the. They don't know who they are. So they, they still haven't found them yet. No, what? they left their a bumper with no license plates. So yeah, it's, yeah. no, <laughs> nothing. Well, there was nothing to shoot. find, and, and not 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 only that. Like people were like. Like crashing into the 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 bumper, you know. Yeah, yeah. People are coming from the freeway, so it's like it's really sad, like to see that there are so many human beings that don't care for other people's lives. Yeah, you know, and no, really worry about about that. nothing but themselves. Yeah, that's terrible. So, um, you know, again, um, I, my family and I, we always try to do positive things in the world. I'm always trying to help people. I'm always trying to help others, my teammates, on anything I can helping other people, other organizations, that's the way that I am, you know, and, and and if I see somebody struggling, like, I try to help, you know, and then I know that this is not something that has been, um, that the world is little by little missing even more and more and more because we're so desensitized and we're so selfish, you know. Um, yeah, like, you've, you've yeah, always, man, I, I know, scared. you have such a good, you know, core of people that follow you and stuff like that in the fan base, so, I mean, I'm sure they'll, hopefully they'll, uh, help out and be buying the gear and stuff like that. It's a good time for that. But yeah, for every person that does that though, that does something dumb like they hit you and they run off. I mean, they, they must have they must have been into some bad shit. They'll be like, we got to get out of here. But there'll be somebody usually that pulls over and helps people too. Like, uh, but yeah. you know, it's we only had that's one, scary. we only had one guy in a truck. Like he literally stopped. Like like I said, we were like on the left shoulder. Yeah. Um, and he stopped and he asked us, "Are you guys okay? You guys need help?" And was like, "No, we we're just waiting for the police." But it's, I mean, telling you, the shoulder is so small, like nobody can stop. Like that's right. the dangerous part. Like we, I mean, have you seen when even when police stops certain people, sometimes like they get you know ran over by an eighteen wheeler and another car, you know, and not paying attention. Yeah. So, <coughs> well, it was really scary. And, yeah, no, I, like, no doubt that, about I was, it. I was like, oh my god. Yeah. My son was alone with a dog at the house, and then I just. Thinking about that, we almost got hit like maybe five or ten times while we were waiting for the the the, the cops. It was kind of scary. Oh, that's yeah, why. That's I mean, you scarier. gotta you got because you, you gotta get off the shoulder area because that's. I mean, every day cops are getting hit. They pull somebody over, and like I've, I've pulled over before, and the cop comes up to the car. I'm like, dude, I was like, can we move over more because we're gonna get like creamed by somebody. Mm-hmm. Everyone's on their cell phones or something, and they they veer off a little bit. So yeah, you don't you, to change a tire now is like taking your life <laughs> to, to pull over no, to change no, a tire. No, I'm telling you, we had no shoulder. It was like the shoulder is probably like five feet. That's how big the shoulder was. So we're like five feet away from the from the mm-hmm. wall. Like if the car would have hit us harder, because he would thankfully God was there for us. He was going slow enough not to like hit us with like full force at sixty miles per hour. We would have hit the wall. Right. That's nuts. So That's it would have terrible. been like a lot more dangerous. So it, it was, I am like, like now that I think about it, like I woke up this morning, I was having a really hard time waking up. Like I am so blessed that nothing happened to my husband and I. And, I, and again, it's like, he tells you like how unprepared you are for like, you know, emergencies like that. I don't like, you know, you just start thinking about life insurance. You start thinking about funerals. You start oh, thinking yeah. about all this stuff. And I'm like, shit, like I need to get my stuff together, you know? And it's just yeah, like, absolutely. 
Yeah, the, it's, oh, it's, 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 it's okay. life can change so quick. We've seen it a million times and it's terrifying. I'm glad it's just the car, but even the car, everything is so much more stressful now for you to go all here or there and, and to try to fix the car. And is it going to break down now? But, um, you know, uh, you guys can follow Thunder Rosa at Thunder Rosa 22 on uh, Twitter. She's got all her, uh, you know, posts about the merchandise and stuff like that. But, um, How's yeah, uh, her directly? It's thunderrosa22 at gmail.com. If you'd like, you can you know go ahead and help her out that way. You could reach out about the gear that she's selling, and you can also check out her YouTube channel as well. You know, get some information there. But congratulations! I mean, th- besides this this unfortunate, tragic, terrible event, you know, I'm, thankfully you're both okay. But it seems that you know things have been going well for you, being the first Mexican-born you know ever NWA World Women's Champion. So congratulations yeah. for that hell of a match against Allison. That was fantastic. Thank you, thank you. It was uh, actually my body still feels that match, man. <laughs> I'm sure it does. It was a brutal feel, event for sure. Feeling, yeah, it was. It was great. It was like I felt like I was um, kind of like when I was in the cage. It was the same feeling. Mm-hmm. I was uh, I was super nervous and um, I was. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a mixture of emotions, and it's been six long years. For some, like it might not be that long, but for me, it feels like twenty. You know, I've been grinding with my family and like moving my family to different states and like to different cities because we're like looking, like you know, searching for a dream. And finally, like something like this happened. And um, yeah, some people are like always comment like, hey, why are you not signed for WWE? Why are you not signed for AEW? Yeah. You know what? And my destiny was to become and make history in some in something like NWA, um, the way that it, it was it was written like that. And I am so excited, man, when I every time I see that championship, when I carry it and when I show it like I'm like I I'm carry I when I showed it to my parents, you know, I went to I went to San Diego and I drove six hours for them to see the championship. Oh, you know awesome. the, the stories that they had because they, they don't my mom hates wrestling yeah, so when really? I told them the story yeah my mom hates wrestling but when I told them the story and the significance mm-hmm. of the championship and the championship that I carry right now they were like both almost crying because they know I'm so passionate about what I'm doing that it's actually I'm actually making a difference you know in, in the history books as little or as big as it is and That's- I am so moved and so excited and so I feel so loved for all the fans that have poor like positive comments and and all the love for me and for my NWA family. I'm just so blessed. I loved absolutely. it. I the loved fans, it. it was fans great. absolutely, you know, love everything you do here, and and you figure to to hold on to that title, which was established in 1937. You look back. I mean, you're you're nearing almost a, a whole century of history in that belt. So that, like you said, the emotions must have been so high, and you didn't look nervous at all throughout the entire bout. So kudos to you for that one. But what, I, what's I mean, the difference? Amazing. What is the difference um, with standing in NWA versus the first time? in the cage like what like what are the are you is it the same exact type of nervousness or that you feel or anxiousness or whatever like is it a different because it's obviously such a different thing performance versus you know hey this i mean you can get hurt in the performance but someone's gonna someone's gonna really try to you know break your face like in this yeah. you know? um you know it I, it was just like interesting because um <coughs> sorry sienna has this, this she has similar experience with uh uh, with MMA, she did an amateur fight, mm-hmm. and she she told me the same thing that she was feeling the same way. She was feeling the jitters, and she was feeling like super nervous. Um, I don't know. Like I told you, this this one is very special because uh, it's been such it was such a big build up to it, and um, the way that uh, NWA introduced me, and the way that um, you know my character flourished in in the company, it was just. It was just meant to happen, and the energy that was in in the arena, like uh, everybody was, everybody was into it. Everybody yeah. was, you know. Uh, I mean, the fans were like they just wanted more and more and more, and then the more that we were telling the story, the more engaged they were. And um, after the fact that we had the match, um, people continue to talk about it, and then you know, again, they they see that um, that two women, very strong women, were able to put a performance the way that we did, and they were very proud about it. Um, it just it meant so much to me, you know, and to her too. Um, and just, we, we like all the ladies in NWA, we want to continue to show that, you know, NWA has one of the strongest women's divisions and, you know, amongst all the other companies. What do you, we give, how we do give you feel our all, about regardless it? Regardless of the matches that come in it for five minutes, we give our all and we, we always tell a story. 
Like, I think one of the things that people like about you, at least this is what I know I like about you, is like, it's like you're, you're, there's something about you that you have the charisma and all that stuff, but also like you're intense when you're out, when you're wrestling, you're intense. You're, you're, and, and that is something that I think a lot of people really appreciate the intensity and uh, the way you are out there, even in Lucha Underground, when you were in Lucha Underground, like we were, I mean, Cobra Moon is like one of the coolest uh, names ever, but like Thunder, Thunder Rosa is like really stuck. Like everybody knows about you when I, you know, when we talk about so this or that, you know, people have seen you somewhere, whether it was Lucha Underground, now NWA, but yeah, NWA is really, um, you know, I think introduced you to a lot of other people who didn't know about you that maybe didn't watch Lucha Underground and things like that. Um, there's so many women uh, coming or that want to come to NWA. I've talked to a lot of different women wrestlers, uh, and they, they really do want to go there. Uh, someone like – they did give an opportunity to a lot of people too, like even Ashley Vox. Like I saw Ashley Vox there. I called some of her first matches in New England up here, and I don't know how she made it, you know, what, you know, got her in over there, but it was good to see people like her get in there too. You worked with her a little bit. Uh, how's that been? It's been really good. She's like again. Um, everybody in the locker room so far has been a delight to work with. <coughs> again, because we all uh, want to show our skills, and um, we are not greedy when it comes to like storytelling. Um, mm -hmm. I have experience in other companies or in other places, and where certain people become very difficult, and and they don't focus so much on what the writers or the story tells. That the, the focus about me, 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 and my shit, you know. Yeah. And um, I think, um, I mean, Ashley, for example, she's uh, wonderful to work with. I always, I always mess around with her and be like, <laughs> I'm gonna tell everybody that you don't, you don't want to work. I said that. Well, she's a young, she's, <laughs> she's, a, she's, she's a new, <laughs> she's. I don't know how long. I think she's, um, you know, she's a, she's a, a new bird. You know what I mean? She's been, I think she's been wrestling five years. I'm not 100 percent on that, but. Uh, but she's like, you know, she's growing on her own and um, she's uh, growing on people and uh, she's uh, she's becoming a, a, a stronger baby face, which is really cool. Again, it's like we all are learning from each other and we all like um, are trying new things and we're like trying to elevate each other's work. Well, you um, was there anything about Lucha Underground that you like regretted or not about what you did, but maybe like what you would have liked to go better or, or how that could have panned out? Mm -hmm. In in that aspect, uh, for Lucha Underground, it was hard for me um, because I was so new. And, like, my first five matches where I watched them and I cried. They were horrible. Oh. Wow. <laughs> you know? But it was like I was I was fucking – I'm sorry about my language. Yeah, But I okay. was put in a, in, in, in a situation where it was like, hey, you got to do Lucha and it's really fast-paced. And I'm like, holy shit, like, I barely know this, you know. But I'm, you know what, I'm just going to make fake until I make it. I mean, I fake it, but it wasn't enough. So like, that probably put me as a manager for a little while, so I can like work on my, on my skills. In season, um, was it three? I didn't wrestle as much. Season four, that's when I got to wrestle with a bunch of the guys, and you know, I was able to show a lot more of my skills. But again, um, I wish I would have been more um, assertive on what I want. You need to be quiet, Drago. <laughs> I'm having an interview right now. I've got two um, dogs upstairs. I, I, they might, they're gonna talk to each other soon. <laughs> yeah, so uh, um, I think I should have been more assertive about my, you know, what I wanted to, to like have or like show on in the show, um, because again, the last season, many times they were like, we want to like, you know, make sure that you, you showcase some of your new new skills and stuff, because at, at at that point I was more confident about myself, I worked on my character a lot more, but it was always very difficult, you know, and that was like uh, one of the things that I would say was the most difficult part. It was working with other people's egos and working with other people's, you know, ideas and stuff. So you just, I just compromised and, and I went with the flow because I didn't want to be, you know, looked upon as being a bitch or mm -hmm. too pushy. Uh, but I should have done that. But now, you know, I learned that um, you can work with other people without, you know, being pushy or bitchy or anything like that. That's, is, that know, a, is that a thing, that though? I'm, is that a thing the women have to the women kind of worry about more than the guys about like, Oh, if I say something, they're going to call me a bitch where like other people could, you know, normally be able to share opinions without the worrying about, you know, getting that kind of reaction. Is that, is that different or is there, is it the same? I mean, you know what it's like in anywhere in the world, you know, if you're an assertive woman, they're going to call you a bitch regardless. Right. Um, but you have to be, you know, you have to be smart about how you talk to people. And I think that's the most important part. And, um, 
uh, I guess because a lot of us have like gone through or um, have experienced some sort of like, no, you don't know what you're doing kind of thing. And you're kind of like have to like raise your voice a little bit or like, you know, try to get your point across. Um, yeah, like <clears throat> it is, it is hard, but again, um, where I am right now, um, I don't have to be assertive. I don't have to be uh, into like uh, get into an argument about things that I want to do. You know, it's just been, pretty easy going and it's been I've been having a lot of fun and that's that's one of the most important parts I, like when I, you're looking forward to go back to tapings when you're looking forward to go back and look and see your coworkers, your bosses like that you don't feel like you're walking in eggshells and like I'm telling you man last time we were there um we had a like a get together with the whole entire team mm -hmm. to watch wrestling and it just feels so natural you know it feels so like fluid and um you know you feel you that you're yeah, you're cared for and um, that you, you belong, you know, and, and that's important for a company to be successful, especially something that is being revamped the way that it is. Did they, but, but then they gave you it at an NWA. They, 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 you have still free reign. I, I assume besides the tapings to you can, can, you can wrestle anywhere you want, right? Still, you can still do independent yeah, uh, bookings yeah. anywhere. Yeah. I take independent bookings. Um, but again, because of, uh, my contractual obligations, uh, my, uh, my fee has changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it, 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 it's a little bit more difficult to get booked, but it's not impossible. Right. I mean, I'm getting bookings in Denver and California and uh, Japan. I'm about to wrestle here in Texas a couple of times. Oh, wow, I have yeah, some, so. um, what about all over the place uh, then? You couldn't <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. would you, would... I, like, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. No, you you couldn't be booked in like Ring of Honor. Say like Ring of Honor called you for an appearance. So you, is that something? Oh you yeah, because would... we, yeah we're working with Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor. So okay, right? Because okay, yeah. because I always wonder because we don't we I mean like we don't see you a lot on the Northeast. You know what I mean? I don't think you've I don't I don't remember the last time I I might have missed you up here recently. Maybe like Northeast Wrestling or somewhere like that. Um, um and the last time I think I was oh my god who really was it? It was in Rhode, I Rhode Island. Okay, yeah. For Beyond. Oh, for Beyond. I was in beyond. singles. I was with uh, Holly Dad when we were still doing the tag. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah okay. So. I, I could have gotten to that yeah. one, yeah. I didn't miss it, though. But, yeah. yeah. It's been a while, but uh, I miss that area. I love working in that area. So I mean, everybody's really nice, and I have a couple of fans that are very, like, um, hardcore. And, um, <laughs> do you have any stalkers? How many stalkers there. do you have yet? Do you have stalker <laughs> fans yet? or? Um, no, you know, like, people, like... I mean, I thankfully, like, because like I said, I have my husband. He's uh, he helps me with my social media. I have a friend. Mm -hmm. He's also uh, <coughs> pretty uh, active on my social media. We all work together with YouTube, everything. So we're all doing stuff together. Uh, well, when we like great. notice somebody like that, uh, we uh, we nip it in the butt real. Yeah, real you quick. shut that down real quick. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to have any problems there. <laughs> yeah. We have some very uh, fantastic, loyal, and, and wonderful fans here, and I just wanted to let you know that Daryl Stoltz in the comments section, because we are live on YouTube, just let me know that he donated $100 to your PayPal to hope, uh, oh you know, it helps God. towards fixing your car. And Boom. a few other people in the chat are doing the same. You, you have so much love pouring in from all of our community here. So we just wanted to let you know that, you know, people are, are, are trying to help support you as much as possible. And uh, you have many, many fans on your side. So, yeah, we got to. I want to thank every single one of them. It's like every, I think it's like every week or every day when I'm like anywhere. I, you know, I wouldn't be here without you guys. Like you guys are helping me live my dream, you know, and, and, and do something that many people are afraid of doing. And like with, yes, that, that right, <laughs> with, <laughs> with going to, um, with, with going to NWA, like you said, people always want to like, Hey, where are you going to go here? You're going to go there. I, I just, I think obviously this is awesome, but I think that there's always another level to, you know, there always will be another level uh, to what you're doing because just based on what I see, I think there's, you know, not that this isn't the top, I mean, but there's so much more to do after this. Um, where, where is it? Where, where are you not, where can you not work? Is there anywhere you can't work? Like, I mean, I know people are like, Oh, you know, AEW and all this stuff, but you're in NWA. They're, they're all kind of separate from each other. You're not going to be working with, no one's going to be working with AEW and WWE. So you're not probably not going to see Thunder Rosa, like working at AEW versus this, but do these people come calling you recently at all? Did WWE giving you tryouts recently or <laughs> AEW? Um, well, I mean, they wanted to give me a trial for referee. Where what? Oh, where, where where was that? Yeah, <laughs> September, at, man. At, the beginning of September. In WWE. 
Yeah, they, they you know, like they were look, they were looking because um, they were gonna move uh, what's her name to the main roster, and they don't right. have any female re- referees, so they were looking for somebody that spoke different languages. And my name was dropped by one of my friends because I was telling him I was like, hey man, you know what? I've been like getting a, a couple injuries. I mean, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a bad idea to do refereeing. I mean, I love wrestling. This is part of being in the wrestling business. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be opposed to the idea. And um, and yeah, man, like he <laughs> he dropped my name and. Uh, Kenyon called me and she's like, "Hey, you want to you want to hang up your boots?" And I was just like, eh, "How much are we talking about?" <laughs> yeah, if, if, if the opportunity was right, but yeah, Jessica, uh, yeah. I, I spoke to her once on Twitter, and she seemed very, very nice and professional. But you know, she moved up to the main roster, and that's interesting because they they are trying to. I think that's a bit reactionary because of of obviously Aubrey and AEW. They wanted to go have you know the, the same kind of reception for their refereeing staff as well. So it's interesting that you yeah, considered that. Uh, yeah, I think um, you know, if I was if I was to do it, I would be smarter. Like. I will make sure I speak like not only, you know, to like four languages. Mm. So I will be more valuable to the company and I can like have more leverage. I mean, that's a, that's a reason why it's, you know, another big company wants to sign me. You know, I know what, what my worth is now. And I've been, I mean, very few of us have been in so many TV shows. Like I have been in the short amount of time that I have been wrestling, you know, and they were like successful shows. It wasn't like just like I went hit and miss, like Lucha Underground. I was like, wow. I was yeah, in, four seasons. Well, is, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, NWA, like I have experience with that. I know how to interview people. I know how to act. I speak two languages. I can sing. I, I learn how to dance. I will learn another language. I, I have no problem being versatile. And I think a lot of people are afraid of getting out of the the bubble you know well yeah like, like you, you do everything like I've, you your youtube channel like i can see the interview stuff like it's very nice it's natural it's fun to you're like a fun interviewer when you talk to people they get pretty comfortable with you um but four languages i mean that's in, that's amazing i can't speak one i can't you know <laughs> i mean like i yeah, mean be, being that versatile they, they everybody else gets scared <laughs> they're gonna be outclassed what, that's what the do issue. you <laughs> if you're doing english and you're I, obviously english spanish probably japanese would be the other one What's the fourth? What's the other language? I mean, I, I, I read Portuguese. I used to speak Portuguese really well before, okay. but I never practiced it. So if you don't practice, you miss it. You, know, mm-hmm. you lose it. So um, I went for, for a year and I learned Portuguese. Um, I really do want to learn Japanese because it's something that I've been using for a long time. And I know like they, they're they like recruiting a lot of Japanese people mm-hmm. and um, don't have a lot of translators. And I know another one that is very important that I know they're trying to get in is Farsi. Right. You know, oh, wow. okay. you know like, so you, it's, it's like, you know, it's kind of like that. They're like the United States forces. Like they just want to like, take over everything. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like it's hard here, like trying to figure out what language like I, I am. I obviously did Spanish because I was like, well, what language am I going to use? So I obviously took Spanish because I'm like, well, that's the only language I can see using besides English right now. But now there's so many coming here that it's like yeah i would i don't know what you know and and i know japanese so many japanese uh listeners speak english like amazingly well i'm like how do you like because here you have to decide what's the second language you know in in japan or somewhere else you know your second language probably going to learn english it makes sense yeah but like here it's like what do you you know what do you pick i mean but i think it's obviously spanish but that's just my opinion. But, uh, yeah, well, Thunder Rosa, is there anything else uh, you want to plug? I mean, I was, I'm very happy that we got you tonight uh, to come on here. Obviously, I, I wanted to get you before this, before the accident stuff, but it just so happens that, you know, there's a car uh, wreck and, you know, you could use some help now anyway, so this works out. But uh, That works in so many ways, and it was supposed to be like this. I always believe things like that. There's no coincidence. Right. You know, um, I, I mean, again, I just want to thank absolutely everybody that has been subscribing and following and watching NWA. Without you guys, again, we will not be able to be so successful. We're still trying to, like, reach a lot more subscribers. Um, we're trying to get bigger and better. Um, also, I want to thank um, absolutely everybody that took the time uh, and the effort to uh, write me a nice little note when I won the championship. I was I legit didn't sleep because I was reading everybody's comments and commenting back. Oh, that's, like, that's so sweet. Yeah, it was, it was happy. Beautiful. The same with all my sponsors that uh, have supported me for my um, for my fight. Um, I will have another fight at the end of the year, probably. Oh, so excellent! Yeah, again, that was one of my questions. I was curious if you were going to get yeah. back into the cage or not. So great to hear yeah, that you'll be been, competing. That's again. the only that's the only thing I train right now. I've been training um, MMA. Like I've been focusing on my MMA skills because, like, again, I want to get 
I'm just really greedy and I just want to get better and like I want to look good in 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 the cage because it's it's a privilege that they allow me to go pro without having an, any amateur experience. It's man, it's, it's it's hard. It's so hard, but I have a lot of heart and you know I have the dog in me. I don't get I don't give up. As one Absolutely. Thing. Like well, I mean, <laughs> so the... well, you will see me in Combat the Americas uh, soon. I will announce when I sign my my next fight and who that will be. And I'll, again, I'll have a opportunity to work with new sponsors again for, for this fight. Cause probably I'm, I'm hoping that this will be either a semi main event again. I mean, it's, it's huge, man. That was the same, my main event in San Antonio with all the wrestling fans that were so supportive and so wonderful and, and so positive towards me. So again, I want to thank every single one of you. You guys know who you are, little kids, little girls, grown men, Oh, my, my pervs, but I love you too, guys. Although, <laughs> oh, the pervs. <laughs> Shout out to the pervs. Hey, well, do, uh, my, yeah, my six-year-old like, like, my six-year-old hey, daughter hey, loves they go, you. They go on OnlyFans.com. They don't, yeah, I don't got no OnlyFans.com or anything. They, hey, they, they, they're you know. all welcome. If you <laughs> got five <laughs> bucks, you got some money, come on in. My daughter loves you. I, I, she was watching the night. I, uh, she watched the NWA um, the night you won the belt, and so she's seen you mm-hmm. before. And she's just like, I love her. I love her makeup too. Like, I want to do my. Can I do my makeup? You know. And she watches. She watches a little bit of wrestling with me, but she does. She loves. She loves the look and the makeup, and she loves watching the women wrestlers. Yeah. So, but yeah, shout out to all my people, all my peoples. You know. I respect all of you. Thank you so much. Again, um, I'm leaving. Again, when I visited California and I went back to where I started, the place that I used to live, the the bridge that I used to cross every single day, I just realized how lucky and blessed I am to be living the way that I live and to provide to my family and to probably, possibly, you know, work on stuff in the future independently the way that we've been doing it. It just feels amazing because it's been on our on our own pace in our own way you know so i want to thank everybody and i want to thank you guys for having me in this in your space thank Absolutely. you so much thank yeah. you so much we, we were so glad to, to hear from you and best of luck with the title reign keep kicking some major ass uh we hope you hold on to that belt for a long time to come that's for sure uh, me too <laughs> <laughs> and I will. all right come back anytime just uh, tweet me up and uh, whatever let me know when you're doing something and we'll try to promote it Okay, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you again. Again, everyone, you can reach out to Thunder Rosa at ThunderRosa22 on Twitter. Uh, If you'd like to help out with her vehicle situation, again, she was hit by a, uh, you know, unknown assailant. She was hit by by an alien craft. Yeah, and uh, her insurance, you know, obviously that becomes a bit of a predicament. So if you'd like to help her out, you can purchase some of her uh, worn ring gear. She's got it up on her Twitter. You can reach out to her at ThunderRosa22 at gmail.com. Or you can help her by purchasing some of her great merch at ThunderRosa.BigCartel.com. So, again, it's ThunderRosa22 at gmail.com. And little does she know, but all the pervs come from this channel. So uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Thank Look at you. that. As soon as she said that all the perv comments, the like, whole chat lit They're up. all here. <laughs> they're all right here, Thunder Rosa. They're, they're going to buy your underwear that you're selling on Twitter and smell the crotch. Everybody in the chat, uh, check out her Twitter uh, and check out her clothes and her wrestling gear that are that is available. And uh, you may be able to uh, get a good... Uh, Get a good smell or hang them on your wall or, you know, whatever you want to do. Give me the hell, yeah. Donations have been waiting. NBC Peacock doesn't launch to after WrestleMania, I believe. I like Joe's idea if they are going to change it. Just charge you on ne- Why is it doing that? It did it again. Jake, it, I know you can't hear this, but it cut off halfway <laughs> halfway <laughs> through the stops. donation. Yeah, just stop working. Alexa's sweet ass. Thank you for the donation. I don't know why, but yeah, cut off halfway through the message. So weird. Alexis, sweet ass. Thank you. See, there's one of the pervs right there. See, she was right. Black Lab 27 is the top guy right now. Thank you to Black Lab. Maybe I'll use that to buy a, a Thunder Rosa t-shirt. D.W. D. Welsh. What up, Joe? What up? Good to see you again tonight, my brother. What's and up? at Jake DeMarco, I have a feeling you will be giving WrestleMania a harsh rant. Giving WrestleMania a harsh rant. Then he says, I thought AEW was a bit better than NXT last night. Gave AEW a 6.5. 
out of 10. Keep it up. Uh, well, yeah, I think a lot of people ended up going with AEW over NXT last night, D. Welsh. Thanks for the 10 bucks, man. It cut that one off, too. So weird. That is weird. I don't understand. This. Hey, Funderosa, you watching this? Look at these skills. <laughs> Joe Omega, will you be going to SmackDown in Boston when John Cena returns on the 28th? Hey, I read the whole thing. Robert Heller. Thank you, Robert, for the 1150. Um, I don't think so. I don't know. I, I don't think so. Uh, you know, I, I did go once recently. Um, I really haven't gone to SmackDown. Unless WWE gives me tickets, I haven't gone. <laughs> I don't think I've gone to a WWE event unless they've given me tickets. That's the... Uh, or they've invited me. When they invite me, I go. Otherwise, I don't go. Now, if you told me the front row tickets were available for like forty bucks or something, I'd yeah, go. Yeah, be a different story. But it have to be it have to be front row tickets. It doesn't have to be on camera. It could be anywhere. Front row or like front area tickets for like forty bucks, I'd go because I yeah, have fun. Cheap and I really have fun having a couple of beers and just being a complete prick in the audience. I mean, seriously, I, but, I wasn't feeling well anyways. But people reached out. They're like, "Hey, do you want to go?" And it was the night of the wedding for Bobby Lashley and Lana, and I'm like. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no I thank just, you. I, I had no desire to sit through any of that. Yeah, no, I don't. I I don't think I'm going to make it. Uh, I mean, mate, we'll see what happens. But I doubt it. But there has been I, some last. I mean, minute. SummerSlam, I'd like to go to just because it'd be fun to meet up with everybody. That's such a big event. People fly out. Well, that I'll be at. I'll, you know, be, in, in Boston, I'll be at that's SummerSlam. That's a different story. But but the, yeah. but the Monday or or Friday shows, it's like uh, unless something big's going on, or we know there's going to be like a group of viewers going that's a different story hey um you know I'll, I'll be there i'll be in yeah i'll be in i mean dude we're gonna figure something out for summer yeah Slam. for boston that, that'll be fun to have everybody come in and... we're gonna camp out at Bo in boston hey guys uh get your questions ready get the super chats get the stream labs whatever you want to do leave a comment uh, we'll try to read everything we can um capital murder call back in about a little while man like 10 minutes or something we'll call back we'll put you on i was only able to take one call obviously because Skype has a problem and obviously I wanted it to be Thunder Rosa since she called in um, <laughs> yeah. uh, no no knock to anybody yeah. else but yeah we really wanted to take like, that I'm gonna that wait. was a great surprise I feel for her you know it, it, it sucks to have that because well, with the hit and run the way it works is you, you have to you know claim it all in your insurance mm -hmm. and then and your insurance you know, it, goes up yeah, you end up paying essentially twice over. So and just waiting for all of it to happen, and you know you're driving around on a limping car, and you're fucking a wrestler, and you gotta you use your car to go everywhere. So it's like like if that had been totaled, I mean, you'd be looking at I don't know renting a car or buying some tr thing like taking a chunk out of the bank. You know I don't know it'd just be crazy. So yeah, yeah. it's a wild thing. Give me a hell yeah. Did you see the guys I put on blast for all the dms I was getting over my Instagram post? But no. Vince never said PPV would be off network. It stopped reading again. Just selling rights so people don't have the network like Amazon, but the pay-per-view off the platform for us stays. Well, Peyton Royce, I mean, like, my understanding is, like, yeah, the pay-per-view is going to take place off platform, but then it's going to eventually show up on the network 30 days later, you know, so it will be on the network eventually. But th there's all kinds of different options, man. There's like so many different there's so many different scenarios um, as involving the idea of the network changing or going away or whatever happens with the network. Like. Put it this way, like it, it could be that the network completely goes away and that you can only watch the network on Amazon or Hulu or somewhere like that. Um, because CBS Access is like that. There's CBS Access, but you can also access CBS Access on Amazon Prime. So why couldn't WWE do the same thing? Hey, do you want the WWE Network? You can get it through Amazon Prime. Um, so there could be that. Then there could be there is no WWE Network and everything is on Amazon or Hulu or wherever. Or it could be that the WWE Network exists, but then pay-per-views cost you money on the WWE Network. Or it could be the WWE Network exists, but pay-per-views you have to buy through Amazon or Hulu or regular pay-per-view streaming. 
Or, you know, like there's so many different options and variations of this. Like the list goes on about the options. It's endless options and possibilities. And I don't know specifically what Vince McMahon is talking about or what anybody's talking about um, when it comes to this. We don't know what they're, what the deals are, the offers are, or anything like that. But what we do know is, um, you know, there's about, they're coming up about a half a million people short, if not a million people short. You know, it's it's like... At least, yeah. Yeah, like, no the, doubt about it. Like, what's nine? Like, just do the math. Nine ninety nine times one million. You know, you're looking at nine million nine hundred ninety thousand. I mean, dude, nine million nine hundred ninety thousand dollars is not a lot of money. I mean, it is, but it's not a lot oh, of money. Obviously, it's life changing. But but to a company like that, yeah, to no. the company, yeah, everything they do rides on that. I mean, I mean, it, a house show they put on loses them a million dollars each time they put on a house show right now. Yeah, this is insane. Like it. it <laughs> Imagine that you're going to a house show and just knowing that it's costing WWE a million dollars to put that on in the let, red. Let, can we put it? Let's put it in perspective, right? Nine nine oh, nine ninety nine times a million. We'll, we'll say a million, right? Well, they said all the all the money re- generated right now is at forty one point six million dollars for the network. Is what? It's forty one point six million dollars. Okay, so. Right. Even even past all the the subscriptions and they said they they generated forty one point six million dollars from the network. So in that quarter my, per quarter. My point in this is so that's two hundred million a year. If you have the network and you buy and and we like say a million people. Here's the calculator. A million people on the network roughly comes out to about one hundred and twenty million. Right. So a hundred and twenty million a year. The network is around is making around 120 million dollars a year. If you want to if you count 999. That's not taking out the charges for the hosting and the things like that and whatever else. Well, that's what they said for for each quarter. You figure if you if you're doing 1.5 million people it you know with the with their subscribe well what is it 1. 1.4 million people times 999. But look at this. That's 72 million. That's how much they'd make selling WrestleMania on pay-per-view. They'd make 70, 72 million at how many buys on WrestleMania? That's eight hundred thousand buys. I gave them eight hundred thousand. Like right now, if there was no network, eight hundred thousand buys, we get you seventy two million dollars. So, you know, when you're talking about nine, you know, nine million dollars a month for the network. That's $180 million, $108 million, whatever. So it's really not, it's almost, um, WrestleMania on pay-per-view almost makes you back the same amount of money you make on the network. Yeah, because every quarter they're making, it says, you know, 41, 9, 5, 8 million. So when you times that, you know, for the whole year, you're ending up at 167, you know, 800,000. So $168 million is what they're making a year on the network. So like I said, almost $200 million. So, and like you said, now you're not taking up server fees and login and, and tech support and mm-hmm. uh, licensing and, and all that shit as well. I mean, there's so much that you have to I adjust mean, for. You so. got to take away the 35% in pay per view charge. But I mean, it really ends up being very close. So, if, if the WWE could. So, so imagine this you, you, like, if the WWE's, all the WWE's pay per views were on pay per view. Versus what they make on the network right now, if they change to that method right now, it would be close to the same, but but they would probably make a little bit more money on pay per view than they would having the WWE network. Now add to that the idea that WWE takes all their content and puts it on Amazon or puts it on fucking Peacock or whatever the fuck you call it. Now you're talking about Amazon paying them a hundred million dollars. Uh, a year or whatever it is for that content. So now you're talking about uh, added extra hundred million, or even fifty million. Even it was a smaller deal, fifty million. That's the Saudi Arabia deal. Look at the stuff they're doing to go to Saudi Arabia for fifty million dollars. Like, what would they do for a hundred million from Amazon? And then add to the fact that the pay per views are going to sell more. So if it comes down to the almighty dollar, they will make thirty percent more money. 
30 or 30 whatever you want to say i don't know three times 30 times i don't know they'll make three times the amount of money they're making right now if they get rid of the network have pay-per-views and 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 sell all their content to amazon or somebody like that i mean they will make huge profits if they do that and they're at the point where they're desperate to do something like that but what's sad is that instead of fixing the product that we watch every week making it better which they did make it a little better recently but if, instead of really making it better and really going out there and coming up with some inventive shit and making the content better, instead, they're not doing that. They're playing the business game, which is what which is what is the problem in the first place. Because as a business, WWE has done an amazingly great job. As a business, they're killing it. Every way you could make money, expand money, get ex investors excited and create all these levels and stuff like that, they're murdering it. But they're completely leaving behind the actual show. They don't do it, which is stupid. Because if the actual show became popular in pop culture or on Twitter with memes and everybody was watching wrestling again, you would have five to six million people watching and they would be signing up for the network and you'd have three or four million people watching on the network, and you'd be we'd be talking about the network growing right now, and 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 there would be no talk of this selling to all these other companies. But when you look at the numbers as a business, as a corporate entity, you're not going to say, "Well, the fans love the network that have it. We don't want to take that away from them." It's so much better as a fan to have the network because you have access to everything we've ever done. It's free. The pay per views are there. Everything. Yes, as a fan, that's great. But to them as a business, they can't possibly like this anymore when they know that they could literally make at least an extra $50 million to $100 million a year by going to pay-per-views again and going to Hulu or Amazon. So it's, 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 like, it's like you guys or, or me or, or anybody here. Imagine if somebody said, hey, you know, you could uh, save $500 a month if you did this or that in your life yeah i, I just do have it. a hard time believing that you know they they would get that many buys i don't foresee that many people they're not going to go back to getting you know 1.1 million buys for wrestlemania it's it's not going to happen no i mean i i, I typed in eight hundred thousand for WrestleMania. i know but i'm saying i don't even think it would be that much honestly no i'd say about if there was no network i'd say if maybe there was no network 400 <laughs> or five hundred thousand, maybe I would I, say normal pay per because normal pay per view is seven hundred, and that would be like they're they're doing because um, people are just so accustomed for wrestling. And the sad part is, what's the difference of UFC versus you know UFC is charging this this exorbitant price, especially because you had to purchase you know all the ESPN Plus stuff last time, and uh, you know you figure you're you're spending a lot that way. And I figure you get more value out of the WWE essentially, you know, for the amount of storytelling. But if it's if people view it as oh that's fake, that's the problem with the conception that they're working so hard to change. I mean, today Fox News, or excuse me, Fox Sports, their their homepage is it was you know layered out with NXT Takeover Portland information and cards, and so they're working hard to change that perception. But well, I mean, I, I'm curious what they AEW had forty thousand buys. I think they had forty thousand buys on Summer, right? Or, Wasn't it? Yeah, it was either Survivor Series or SummerSlam. Did forty thousand pay per view buys, which, I mean, forty thousand. It was eighty dollars. So I mean that's that's three point two million. Um, and, full gear for their estimated buys. I mean that's AEW obviously, but that that's to show you know full price and things like that. It was estimated at a hundred thousand pay per view buys. Is that counting the BR network too, or? Uh, it says garnering a hundred thousand pay per view buys. Uh, let's see here. This is similar for All Out, which took place on August thirty first. Uh, Melter noted that the digital numbers for full gear were similar to both All Out and AEW's first pay per view, Double or Nothing. So yeah, digital numbers. Okay, so, so pay per view and digital sales is is around a hundred thousand. What were buys. they charging? Forty nine ninety nine, I think. I believe. I think pay per view might have been sixty, and the the uh, online option was fifty. So just to put this in perspective, AEW made about five million dollars on their last pay per view. Right? Is that the one you're talking about? Their last pay per view. Yeah, for Full Gear. So in full, full Gear made $5 million for AEW. Now, I mean, obviously, you got to take out what... That's just what the net is. You know, obviously, it's not what they made. But, you know, they, they produce $5 million. WWE, let's go back. WWE is making... Um, WWE is making $10 million a month on the network. $10 million. 
AEW made five million on yeah. one hundred thousand buys. So if WWE exactly. so, can even do if WWE can sell three hundred thousand, you know, it's seventy dollars. But the thing is, AEW people might be more willing to purchase that because there's one every four months, mm-hmm. give or take, you know, every three months. It I seems. know, but there's three and million people. There's at least three million people with their eyes on WWE still. Exactly. So, but but would they all be willing if they go back to? Oh, now you got to pay for a full schedule. Even you know, it depends on how they do it. And I, I, if I was them, best option, I, you know, keep the network subscription at ten bucks and add a ten dollar premium tier for pay per views. Done. You get you're doubling your investment, and I guarantee you see a lot of people stick with it. And I would I would focus on adding as much easy content as possible. Like what we said, they, they do it every now and again. You know, oh, they have Edge in there talking about his best moment. We'll, we'll do that for an hour. You know, do, you can do all these things. They're doing these break, uh, like break it down moments. They had uh, Kevin Owens and Drew McIntyre. They each talked about like two or three matches. It was a hell of a listen. Yeah. You got a good amount of backstory. You know, you talked about Drew the first time he faced The Undertaker in 2011, then again in 2019, and, you know, the, the correlation and the difference between the two and how they want, you know, that's the stuff a lot of people are interested in. Get the reactions. Get you know, there, there's so many avenues that they could take that doesn't require a huge production budget, and and you get a lot of value from. That's why I'm baffled why they don't take advantage of these things. You know, go the YouTube route of, not vlogging, but you know, behind the scenes when they do the WW24, those are excellent. But do it, you know, you could still have your documentary style shows, but do ones on a smaller budget with less of a production value. That just keeps people in the know. People, you already broke kayfabe. People want to see the behind the scene things. Let them in. The breaking ground on the NXT breaking ground. I always go back to that. I love that. If they, I yeah, that was second, great. Like if they told me that they're selling a second season of that on Blu-ray, and that that's the only place I could get it, I'd buy the Blu-ray. That's how good the fucking first one was. And and there's only one. I don't know why. But uh, let's go back to the donations again. Super chat. Ten dollar access to Lacey Evans dressing room. Sup, Joe. Yeah. I want to see Lacey Evans get dressed. I want to be one of the pervs. I want to be one of Thunder Rosa's pervs. That's what you should start calling them. Uh, who was that? That <laughs> the just nasties. The, yeah, instead of the nasties, the pervs. Juan, what's up, Shut Juan up G? And Thank you. Over. Finish it. Shout out to the pervs. Oh I don't finish it. Please don't finish it. I'm gonna finish it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Put it in my ass. Oh, God. New York Giants, Frank, son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, that's just wrong. This Everybody sm- kept pounding it in there. Everybody kept pounding it in there, Tommy. Everybody kept pounding it in there. But uh, thank you, man. And yeah, it was great. Go back and listen to the I Will Cut the Thunder Rosa part for everybody, obviously, and send it around. I'd love her to get as much um, notice about that. So thank you, man. I appreciate that. What else we got? Oh, a little Swiss bit herb. of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's JR was in rare form last night. He called Nyla the king of the mountain and told MJF to shut up. I liked when he told MJF to shut up. That was fine. Swiss herb, thanks for the $3. Yeah, that part was fine. That was great. Problem was when JR was like, you know, we're going to be back on Monday in Atlanta and, and we'll see you. It, 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 like, this is the last commercial break of the night. He said that halfway through the show. He goes, that, uh, we're going to take our final commercial break of the night. What? <laughs> He's like in raw clothes mode all the time or something. It, Here we go. About to get Here it, man. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh no. Here you go, my dude. Uh, Derek Matthews, thank you for the $5 super chat party. Much appreciated, man. Thank you, Derek Matthews. Look at this guy fail at jump rope. Look at this. You ever done that? Oh! I mean, he didn't even get close. I mean, this is, I feel like this is a prank. I feel like this guy was, like, laying in the, on the ground in the park. And these dudes, like, walk by, these, like, YouTuber people, and they were like, or video guys, like, hey, let's get the homeless guys to, like, Try to jump rope or whatever. And then he's like, I can do that. And then uh, he couldn't do that. And then, then the rope got even got wrapped around his neck. It's very dangerous. They could have been sued. Are you ready? Yeah. 
He's coming down the aisle. I can't believe it. Ready for this. Here comes Corey. What a move. You'll never see anything like that again. Good God, he's awesome dead. Awesome show tonight. Feels good, man. It feels good, Corey. Corey, thanks for the $11.50. Ah, mwah! Buenas noches, Senor Corey. I'm about to tell you. No, I'm just, I'm just messing around. Thank you, man, for the 11.50. Much appreciated. Corey L. The L stands for lesbian. No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't. Uh, but Corey, thanks, man. Much appreciated. Who's the top donator so far? We got Black Lab still on the, still with the championship title, holding that thing proud and strong throughout the night tonight. So much appreciated to him. We'll see if anybody Super can overtake him Jack. tonight. Party. We're gonna find out. Just want to say love you guys. I love Great you. interview. Hopefully you guys get more. You'll deserve it. Ernie Beware, thanks for the four ninety nine. Thunder Rose has been been great. She's always been cool. She's been saying she's gonna come on for a while, so we just hadn't hooked yeah. up. So I, I you know, she was boom. She just at first you know, MMA fight she had against Nadine, however the hell I always forget her last name. Oh, uh, I was I was so hyped to see her, and and she did well. I mean, she held out for all three rounds. She did lose. She did better than decision, CM Punk, is what I was gonna say. Ex was exactly. On the call. She for having no fight experience prior, in the sense of no no actual matches. Yeah. She went in. That girl, you know, the undercard was was you know four and one before getting there, and it was like, yeah, uh, she did very well. Well, that's the thing that's funny. I, I I forgot to say that to her. I was gonna be like, "Oh, you did better than Punk," you know. <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm di that's why I was happy that she she brought that up because I wanted to know if she was going back Super into the cage. Don't know if I should buy or stream Full Gear. What the Full Gear? Like the old one? What's he talking about? Buy or stream Full Gear? <laughs> we have a new member of the JCS Army. Oh shit. 75 Sky, Loft Mexican. What's going on? Thank you so much for uh, becoming a member of the show. Much appreciated. Oh, I, I think True Bar means for the new uh, pay-per-view, the Revolution. Oh, Revolution. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, no, we never advise that you stream anything, although it was fine last time. But no, I I wouldn't dare suggest you stream it. <laughs> I, I do. If you have the money you want to guarantee, go for it, you know? I do, uh, yeah, I do buy it. I buy it on, um, the only thing that stinks is... Yeah, I, I do too. <coughs> oh, well. Stuck, stuck in my throat. <coughs> <laughs> I, I put it on the big screen in the other room. But I do, um, there was one where I bought, this is crazy, I bought two. Yeah. Because I, think I it was all in, right? Yeah, because I couldn't, I wanted to watch it on my TV, but then sometimes I had to be on the computer, and so I literally bought it on both. <laughs> crazy that, so they got you know, about it they got over it well i also i think somebody had i think somebody might have dropped a grand one night and my kids was sick so like i was going in between rooms and i didn't really know that i bought the other one and i guess i did so then i was like all right i thought when i yeah, bought i think it, you thought you signed in again i remember you bringing that yeah, up and when i bought it on br <laughs> i thought i could watch br on my xbox and i couldn't get it to work so then i was like fuck so then i bought it so i spent over a, about 110 dollars on fucking AEW one night, so you're welcome, AEW. I mean, that was nuts, but I did it. It was fucking crazy. Um, you covered one of those non-paying jabronis out there. I don't know right. who would do that. Yeah. Just bastards. But, um, yeah, man, shout out again to the $25 pa patrons, the new ones. Junebug is in there, and then Shy God as well. Thank you, guys. If you want to check out my Patreon, please go over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. We'll be hitting up the post show in just a few minutes. Uh, Capital Murder Man, uh, try again. We'll get you on now. Uh, what would you think, uh, Jake? What, do you, what else do you got on the I uh, Matt Hardy is already set as far as his financial concern before he ever signed with WWE. Meltzer was bringing this up. He, he chose WWE to be creative over the money option. It wasn't that he wanted the money. He wanted to come back with his brother and bring the broken brilliance with him. <laughs> so because he's set for life in his past, he, he you know, he, he, he basically had nest eggs, did well for himself and was smart. Money Matt, go figure, handled things properly. He said he, he's not one of those guys who looks at a money figure and thinks this will make a difference later in life and needs to take it. He's, he's chosen creativity over money many times before. And that's why a lot of people are, are almost positive that he's AEW bound. Plus, with the uh, JR Bucks of Youth call, they think that that was a bit of an Easter egg. So, 
Yeah, it definitely feels like it. Um, Especially knowing that he left WWE this week. Like, if he said it any other week, I'd be like, oh, it just kind of seems like, you know, it, it's just coincidence. But knowing that he left, said his goodbye, and then JR says it, it, it seems like JR maybe wasn't supposed to say it, and it just came to his mind, knowing, like, Matt's coming and it slipped. Either way, it would work perfectly because it generated tons of conversation. And I mean, exactly. Dude, so I got to believe that when Matt Hardy comes here, we're fi- are we finally going to see what we thought we would see like three years ago now? When He's he- posting uh, throwbacks left and right of old broken, you know, highlights, him and Itchweed and all that kind of stuff. So I really hope that, you know what I mean, that they, that they get that story going. The, the best thing is most of the crowd knows it. It's not like WWE where he comes out and and it was WWE's fault. They never retold the story or explained what the character was. You know what I mean? So most of those casual WWE fans were like, what the fuck is he doing? Why is Matt Hardy acting like a vampire guy or, so, or whatever he is? Why is he talking like that? Like none of the crowd. Think, think about this. Just everybody think about this. To the regular casual WWE fan that didn't watch Impact and didn't know about the awesomeness that was Matt Hardy in 2016... And they only knew about Matt Hardy from the Hardy Boys back in the day, or whatever. Why is he talking like that? Why is why does he have this song? What is broken? What the fuck are people talking about? Like well, that's they, why they could have transitioned them into the gimmick pretty easily because yeah. the, the fans one would have been very very receptive, chanting delete and all that stuff. So that would have gotten people excited, and they could have explained it pretty simply. I don't think it would have been a huge issue for them to to really transition the crowd into accepting it. It was one of those things where, you know, it kind of made sense as to why he ended up this way. And, and uh, the rest of the story would just be as they, they followed to explain it. So, But, of course, WWE has no desire to, to tell stories usually in that manner. So, Yeah, it's, it, it's it was, so it was stupid. a wasted option. And then on top of it, they why wanted to do their own thing. Why wouldn't they see the value of what Matt Hardy did and be like, we, we're going to retell this story like... You're you're now you've lost this brokenness, and then do some crazy story where Matt Hardy falls off something, and he and he becomes broken, and then start go like basically retell the story in a way. Yeah, you could, you could redo it and start it from scratch in your own you know in why office. Why not do that? Like why would that would have worked well too? Instead, they just they they they, they you know on a whim threw it out there and it fell flat. I mean, it, they, it worked they, a little bit. Yeah, but. they just were like, just be that. Okay, here's new music. Here's the gimmick. But, like, never explain the They tried to have him, like, get attacked for a while, and you kept thinking, like, oh, that's going to be the culprit. That'll be the reason why he's broken. He got his head smashed in. He got attacked. He got, And it just never came. And you're like, all right, what's going on here? And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, by the way, one of the things I had heard also is that the reason Matt does – they said Matt owns the broken gimmick. I don't know the validity of this. This is just a hearsay. So, again, take it with a grain of salt. But seems to line up and make sense. Again, no guarantee. But Matt apparently was able to have control over the broken gimmick coming from Impact when they had the whole fuck that owl thing. You know, right. When they finally had that deal work out. But because, he didn't. because he owned it after that, uh, he didn't want WWE to to then claim it if he did the broken gimmick, and that's why they went Woken instead. So now, you know, if right. he was to go elsewhere, like AEW, he couldn't do the Woken gimmick because that's WWE's. Right. But I guess the fear was if he did the straight up broken stuff in house, whatever he didn't have a trademark for or like full access rights to, WWE could control when he left the company, and he wanted to make sure he can own those IPs going forward. So that's why he did the Woken Warrior instead of the Broken Warrior. So it was par- that makes sense. So I him mean, partially being logical. so him partially being nervous about that kind of maybe made Vince be like, "Fuck this." Yeah, that and plus Vince didn't understand it. The, the, uh, right. So many people confirmed that time and time again. Matt's wife just even posted a meme recently about, you know, Vince ripping up his ideas. It, so many times had we heard reports that Vince just doesn't get the broken gimmick. He's like, people like it. I'll give it a shot, but I don't understand it. Because it's, it's not poop jokes. He, uh, he didn't enjoy it. Well, is it, it's like, I feel like if they, <laughs> if they could have shown him, like, the, the impact. He, he watched it. They, they showed him on a plane the uh, deletion match and whatnot. And he just, he was like, I don't get it. That was that big report then. He was like, I don't understand it. I don't know why everybody's going crazy for it. Hmm. 
It just, he didn't grasp it. It was You're weird. talking about I the mean, guy that doesn't know the Asian porn exists and didn't know what a burrito was. So, what's a burrito? I'd have a hamburger. Um, um, so we have an update. I got a bunch of little stories here. Uh, Stephanie McMahon basically said that uh, don't hold your breath with Ronda Rousey is what I take from this. She's talking to ESPN. She said, I know she's very excited about coming back. I sincerely hope we have Ronda Rousey back for WrestleMania at SoFi. So that's next year, 37. Yeah. So she said, I don't know. It didn't work out so well for me last time. I think I'll let her do her own thing. You know, talking about their match. That was funny. But the final quote said, she had things in her personal life that she wants to do. When the time is right, she'll be back. I have no doubt about that. So they still have another year on her contract. Anyways, it ends after Mania next year. Eventually, they're probably going to force her to return, I'm sure, if she doesn't willingly return. Yeah, I'm sure that I'm, she'll be back at some point. I just, I, yeah. I'm in the I mean, mindset. She, she was tentatively supposed to come back for the Rumble, and then I, I guess the 911 filming injury with her finger delayed that. And then you're still hearing more about her personal life and wanting to, you know, raise children and whatnot. So there's a lot of layers to it, but. I enjoyed her. Um, then we hear Adam Cole saying that he wants to face AJ Styles at WrestleMania. He said, if I could have a match with anybody right now in the entire world, I would love to wrestle AJ Styles at WrestleMania. So that's cool, adding uh, some some you know credence to the fire that is AJ at WrestleMania. I mean, obviously those two aren't going to face off, but you know it, it just adds to the, the overall uh, interest after today's news of The Undertaker and AJ reportedly going to go ahead and face off well, at plus WrestleMania. These, these, these guys would be good because, you know, AJ... Younger, younger talent that's yeah. agile to work with Taker. That's Number when Taker one, gets his best matches. Taker can pick him up. It's not like Goldberg, you know what I mean? Yeah, Taker we're can, super heavy. AJ Styles can jump, sell, like, be picked up. AJ can run the whole match. Can run the whole thing, exactly. That's that's why it's like... That's why, like, when Think people Think about the casket match Undertaker had with Rusev, you know? Right. Same kind of idea. Obviously... I would I would hold AJ in higher regards, but still it was much better than we thought it would be because someone young, agile, able to move, able to sell, able to to, to assist Taker, and like when he goes to lift you for the tombstone, people can leap off and jump and move, and I, 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 I'm all for it. So that's that's a yeah. great media match. Yeah, like Sting, I'm I'm always fifty fifty. Like, hey, I'd love to see it, but it's kind of like I, Sting I mean, said he would only come back to face him at, at Mania, and apparently. Uh, again, grain of salt thing, but I heard WWE only had interest in having him return at a Saudi show. Wow. If that's true, I feel like that's a, a huge miss. But well, maybe they realize that the match they would have probably wouldn't be great. I mean, think about your last memory of Sting in WWE. He collapsed. No fault of his own. I mean, obviously the buckle bomb did it and wasn't really Seth's fault either. He had spinal stenosis. I mean, the was, poor guy deserves to show up one more time and look better than that. He really yeah, does. Like, I mean, than him seriously. collapsing in a heap in the ring. I mean, that was our last. I mean, I'm, I'm not even a big sting guy, but like, this guy needs to come back for one thing so that he doesn't. That's not the last thing. I mean, yeah, it, especially it doesn't, as he says he's been cleared again. Yeah, it doesn't matter that much, but it kind of does. Like, it kind of like, even on a Raw, like, some time. Sting needs to come back and have one clean match, maybe even a victory. See, he's the type of guy where he lost twice. I mean, yeah. that was what was so surprisingly devastating. I hated, hated that match at Mania because they made it WCW versus WWE. And that's never what it should have been about, ever. Once they did that and they, they framed it in that manner, adding Ugh. DX and the NWO, I hated it because I, I knew Sting had no chance because Vince is never going to let the WWE lose in, in, in that ideal of a match. He's never going to say, oh, WCW guys beat the WWE guys. But that's not what it should have been. That's what mm. it was. not Anything but for the story building up to that match. The problem is... It was, it was the authority running wild with power, and Sting was there as like the, the gut check. Problem was, I think I think Vince wanted to like build up Triple H for all these matches, the things that he was Vince doing. Vince wanted to, to 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 put an end and a bullet in the head of WCW one more time. That Probably. that was all ego for him. Why he not? He wanted to say I beat WCW and I, I you know that that was a fucking glory moment for him. I don't him. understand I'll, I'll why he didn't against. see what it really was like, which is like Sting is a guy who like hasn't wrestled in anywhere major in forever. He was part of the losing WCW, if you want to call it that. They lost in the end. Um, all these things, years and years, it's kind of logical that this guy comes back and gets some kind of revenge, like some kind of win, like because 
Triple H. It was just odd because they didn't frame it that way at all whatsoever until WrestleMania in the match. And then they did to him what they did to Goldberg. That's how you knew he was going to lose, too, is you were like, well, wait a minute. They're doing the same thing to Sting that they did to Goldberg. They gave him some kind of weird new music. Yeah. Goldberg's fucking, when Goldberg came into the WWF back in 2005 or four or whatever year it was when he came in, three, I don't know. Two or three, yeah. It was like, instead of the fucking awesome Goldberg music, the do 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 Yeah, he had that shitty reversion. It was like, like, what the fuck is that? Like, and then Sting comes out and you're like, here comes the Sting, the Crow and everything. And then fucking, all it is is like some like drum march. Yeah, and it was some like bad an Asian drum beat. Some whammy bar guitar that made no sense with anything. It was like, so like, <laughs> is that a cat or is that a guitar? I don't when, know. when you when I hear that, I go, wow, this guy's music is terrible. Compared, why yeah. didn't he just have the regular Sting music? Like they don't even want to pay. The whole situation that burned my ass. I hated that. I I, I really despise that. We were laughing. Setup. I think if I remember my review. Yeah, we were laughing at that point. But I mean, like laughing and like I like what the fuck that like yeah, what are they it was doing? So ridiculous. Does anybody remember if I streamed that or like if I was live or I mean I know I did a review, but what WrestleMania was that? That was thirty two. Was it? Oh yeah, was that was that the one where the sign was there? Somebody brought my sign or whatever. Maybe th- no thirty one. Was thirty one. Thirty one was the sign. Yeah, so it was 30, 31. 32 was the sign because AJ was there, right? Oh. Um, that was 31 because it was outdoors. That's when uh, they had the cash in with Seth. So that was 31. I got to look it up. But I remember we were laughing so mad. At it, it was like, 2015. It was so. so fucking funny. Like, um, Yeah, 2015. 2015 was the year? Yep. Wow. All right, I'm going back on my channel right now to look. T- problem is you type in WrestleMania. It's like fucking... 70 videos come up. Um, Sorry, chat. There's a huge delay. I, I beat you to it. <laughs> yeah, there's a big delay. And then, uh, yeah, tonight there is, I noticed. But um, I like the idea, if it is true, that they're considering Goldberg taking on Cena. That's a great opponent for Cena. As much as people are saying, like, oh, Velveteen Dream and all these, you know, that'd be great fantasy booking-wise. But you know WWE was never going to, logically go with that they they need something big and to us fans it's big but to the general you know crowd uh, casual ones seeing two titans of entertainment goldberg and cena go head to head that that's as close as you're going to get to stone cold and goldberg you know in the sense of like you have these two pillars of the WWE or wrestling in general two two massive uh, blockbuster individuals, so that, that that's that's you know pretty pretty big deal for these two to face off, and especially with the last match we got from John with the Undertaker, that was very quick. I mm-hmm. imagine they'd give us something pretty damn similar, where it's like you know sub five minutes. Right. I can't find this. Am I crazy, Joe Cronin? I, I I watched your thirty one review not long ago. I don't know if you had a reaction to it. It was 31, not 32? Yeah, it was 31. Oh, my God. I'm stupid. Um, Here it is. Oh, here it is. I found it. Why the fuck couldn't I find it? It's weird. But, yeah, we probably... Wow, we got a lot of dislikes. This was back when... See, this is back when... Because people thought you were streaming the pay-per-view. This is... Dude, this is back when... Like, this is when I say people copied my, my titles. Nobody did titles like this back then. Uh, WWE WrestleMania 31 review, Joe Cronin show 329, 2015. Okay, I take that back. I changed that title. That this got changed. That's not what the original title was, definitely. But yeah, people thought it was um thought it was uh the show. They <laughs> it still got more likes than dislikes, I'll tell you that. Because at that point, you know, the network was there, but so many people were still looking on YouTube for full content. Were you here? No, you weren't here. Get yet. some. No, deep- I called in at one point, but I called Seth Rollins being Randy Orton. Apparently, I was. It was that end off. of that summer that I I joined on. We were fucking. I was just like, I was laughing my balls off. I remember when when Sting lost. I couldn't. I was like, <laughs> that's so fucking. In the sledgehammer. I remember and messaging I like, you, and you, we were just dying. I can't, I still can't believe that. I'll have to watch that later and, and rem- reminisce about it. Me and Jake are going to be on the post show in a few minutes. Uh, over on uh, Patreon, if you guys are patrons, uh, we'll have that uploaded to the Patreon soon. But uh, 
Let me go back. Seth to the- Rollins said he wants to face Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 37. What? I don't know if Hulk can can stand another year, but Seth was talking about the greatest wrestling company in the world bringing the greatest event of the year to LA in 2021. Hulk Hogan, Hollywood Rollins versus Hollywood Hogan. Book it, brother. I mean, I'm game. Sure, but I mean, Rollins is so boring on, on to me. Hulk's, you know, aging body. Well, that'll be it, man. That that'll be Hogan's last. I mean, whatever that he has does to be, if that's the case. I mean, I, I wish they would do that this year, especially with Seth being a heel. He might be a face by then, or he might be. Oh, next year, old Jesus! Man Hogan. You're talking about next year? Yeah, thirty-seven. They want to do it next year in L.A. Hollywood. WrestleMania Hollywood. So have Hollywood Hogan versus Hollywood Rollins, he said. <laughs> you know, I, I, that's what I'm saying. Waiting another year on Hogan's aging body. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous to think Hogan does that this year. Like, next year? What the fuck? Yeah, this year is, is enough of a laugh, but Hawk Hogan needs a, you know, a goddamn uh, a whole medical team to get him to the ring. That is, uh... but if they did that this year, I, sadly, I'd be for it because of the way Seth is so great right now with the Messiah thing. I think the promos would be fun. I think that I'm not even considering the match, but just the buildup of those two going head to head. I think it could be interesting. I, th- I think it would be funny. I think we'd get a lot of enjoyment out of there. We'd probably laugh at them more than with them. But could you picture Hulk like really trying to cut a promo on Rollins and? Uh, I think it. I think it would be fun because what is Seth going to do this year? What does he have to do? I don't know. He's man. not going for any titles. He's got the tag titles, but that's not going to last. I doubt. Matt says uh, maybe Alistair Black versus Seth. That would be that would be a great matchup, but getting there is is a far cry of of something you know going down. So I, I tweeted this out earlier, Jake. I wrote caption. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote. I, I wrote caption this. The first, the I captioned this. I just tweeted this out. The first person to respond to this was Razor Roberts, and he wrote, "By God, I found Captain Winky." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> oh, I like Venom's too. That woman is diabolical, or is that even a woman? You know, uh, you gotta, dude. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly ready to choke people out over that because I gotta tell you guys. I got to tell you guys, I have been yelled at. I've been yelled at by fucking right-wing people. Like, how dare you call her a her? She's a man. You you idiot. And I've been yelled at by the left-wing people. It's a woman. She's a woman. Stop debating about it or calling her whatever. the. So, like, literally, my email is fucking filled after yesterday we did a show and I, we talked a lot about her on the AW review I, okay it's only eight emails but and we spoke very highly of her on that show right I... but it's eight emails about people telling me what I have to call her and they're like really angry plus over plus a it. plethora of tweets you know what like it's like dude like so I'm getting yelled at for not calling her a guy by one group of people then I'm getting yelled at by a different group of people because I don't because I guess I sometimes didn't call her a girl a woman we, we but, never, but I usually call her a woman. Her. I usually call her a woman, and honestly, yeah, I don't, we didn't I don't, misgender her at all last night. I hate even saying that fucking. I word hate that either. I, honestly, I can tell you what I could give a fuck about me. I couldn't I'll, give a I'll, fuck I'll, either. But here's the thing: we, 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 you know, with, with Jr. getting shit on for this, I think it's so ridiculous. You have Becky calling herself the man. You have a, a woman male champion in another wrestling company. You yeah. know, Tessa's got the the men's belt. They want to take the word woman away from the championship oh, in NXT. Fuck. God damn it. That was a question I had for Thunder Rosa. I was going to say, what do you think about the women's in the championship? Because I think who cares? I think it's a woman's I title. It's, it's great. Yeah. You have to have some distinction. I meant to ask her that. God damn it. What are you um, going to call it? Championship A and championship B? I mean. I'll send her a follow up. You know, you're going to say, what do you, what do you, uh, what do you think of the, the NXT champion? Which one? You always have to say, which one? Fuck that. And all he said was the king of the mountain. I, I don't find that to be an insult. If someone called me the queen of the kingdom, I'd be like, hey, yeah, go for it. <laughs> you know, you're still saying you're higher up. Fuck, fucking, yeah. that's the worst you got out of all they're of asking, that? They're acting like he called her Frankenstein. I can understand if people were pissed being like, oh, that <laughs> man is now the women's champion. 
that would be a decisive kick to AEW's SJW balls. Keep it up. Keep it up. I mean, I'll, I'll call her Frankenstein. People keep it up. But here's the thing. I call her a woman mostly because she became a woman. And because here's the default for me. Like, people are like, you better call her a man. She's a He's a man. You better call her a woman. All these different, the different SJW groups, the left and the right, yelling at me. The bottom line is, what does she want to be called? Oh, she wants to be called a woman? I'm going to call her a woman. That's the default. Exactly. Be what you want to identify as. And we've always been fine with that. But, like I said, being called king of the mountain, that I don't see how that's an insult. That that means, you know, you're you're the top of the kingdom. You're the ruler. What what is what is the problem with it? I don't. Um, I, that's why I don't understand. The, the, oh, because king it, it means you know in reference of gender. Because oh, it meant men. Oh. I just took it as like it being like you know the ruler of the of the kingdom. You're you're yeah, the top yeah. of the. Uh, but you, like I said too, if people if he <gasps> said she was the queen of the yard, people would be like, oh, you're calling her a queen, so you mean she's a drag queen? Like he couldn't have won, no matter what you say. That's the problem. See, they don't care. I would tweet out what you're fuck saying. Yourself. They just want to to fucking find some vitriolic thing to complain yeah. about. You know what? I hope like someone writes that to me, man. I just that's just, that's why I'm not on. That's why I'm banned on Twitter for life, man. That type of stuff. Like you, you, that's what they do. They they get you to say something back, and then they they delete your shit. These are bullies, man. They're all over the internet. There's just psycho bullies. Dude, like, I mean, not to go into this stuff too much, but for a second I'll mention it. I mean, there's people that bash me for hours. Bash me for hours. Hours of bashing me. And if I respond to anything, then there's just more bashing. And then on top of that, if I mention certain people's names, they, they do hour streams on me, two-hour streams on me, and I get yelled at. Then the other day, you know, Tommy calls up, and he tries to bring up those people, and I said, listen, I don't want to be bringing up people's names and causing problems because I get, you know, I don't want to get in trouble for talking about people. So don't bring it up here. Well, apparently, like, that was a problem. Apparently, me not wanting to talk about people is me talking about people. So there is no right answer with these psycho troll type people or yeah. just crazy people in general who are nuts who want you to say something about them so that they can be talked about. I mean, dude, it's in, it's unbelievable. I was sent something earlier today where, like, somebody talked about me today, apparently, and I didn't see it, but apparently they talked about me for two hours, people that I used to know. Two hours of bitching about me over me basically muting Tommy to be like, don't talk about these people. It's like, <laughs> dude, so now, say, so now I'm in trouble. You're in trouble if you don't talk about them. You're in trouble if you do talk about them. You're in trouble. Oh, my God, there's all these rules. Um, but that's what they do on Twitter. They talk shit, yeah. then you say something back, and then they fucking they, they attack you. That's what Jim Ross... And so Jim Ross has to just be like, I'm not responding to this shit. I don't care. Now, but at the same time, I, I understand why he's being criticized because he did so much weird shit the other night. But I don't, I don't think it needs to be... It's funny. It's not... Like, there are people being like, you suck, you know, because you said King of the Mountain. You're a piece of shit because you said... You know, the commercial breaks were done for the night and halfway through, you know, you're a piece of shit because you said see you Monday in Atlanta, even though, you know, obviously AEW's Wednesdays. So I don't think it I don't think it it's not mean. I'm not like angry where I want to go tweet JR to be like, you know, you're a fucking idiot, JR. You know, I don't really want to be mean to JR. I, I take it more as funny. I think it's hilarious. Like the guy literally like thinks he's on Raw at ninety eight. Like, we're we're gonna take our final commercial break before when we get back, he says that halfway through the show, there's clearly going to be six more commercials. What are you talking about? And then, okay, we're clearly not going to be on the air Monday. We're going to be on the air Wednesday. I mean, honestly, I think it's a miracle that he has not said WWE yet. I I had that same <laughs> thought. I really, really, you know, think that he has uh, got some more slips to come. That's for sure. I mean, it's dude, interesting, but I am waiting. I could see it happening. I'm waiting. I'm I'm shocked he hasn't slipped yet, with all the other little Freudian slips that he's made, or you know it's something about Vince or you know, something like that. Some some real like, uh, like Hey King, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just just one of them. Oh, dude, it's it's uh, it's uh, side note. Crazy. Did you hear about all of this news? Of, you know, Eddie Gomes sent it to us the other day first, but mm. about Okada being sought after by Triple H so heavily. Yeah, I heard about it, yeah. God, that's I'm another sure thing that bothers me. Like, I know NXT needs to grow, but they're so worried about procuring talent, and it's like you have a, uh, such a wide variety at this point. Work on what you have, you know? Like, I, I, of all people, that's who you want to procure. I know Okada's one in a million, but 
I just don't see that being successful in WWE. Every single, you know, foreign star that they brought in from from New Japan, I, I don't really view as a full success. You know, sadly, unfortunately, right? Yeah. They ruined Kenta. I know he had a bunch of injuries and stuff, but still, that went to the wayside. Nakamura is a shell of his former self. He's had only, you know, truthfully one amazing match in WWE, and that was his first with Sami Zayn. Asuka, Kaidi Sane. Asuka had a great run in NXT, but, you know, main roster, done for. Kaidi Sane, since she's come up in, until she was paired with Asuka, nothing. Io Shirai's got so... And they all have great potential and, and, and abilities. We know this. It's just, for some reason, Vince views them as lessers, I swear. And whether it's the language barrier or, or something, I'm not sure, but... Okada, yeah, Lance, he'll be chasing the 24-7 title. I just don't get why. Um, yeah, because w when you look at you look at Nakamura's situation, you'd be like, look, look at what happened to this guy. Do we really want to fucking, do I really want to go over there and be a part of this shit? Like, after oh, I, what they did I, I did this forget guy? about Lord Tensai. He was top notch. But <laughs> Remember when he came over, they were like, he, they did build him verbally well. They were like, oh, he's been the top guy in japan and just spread fear all this stuff and then like he turned into like basically what AEW did with what's his face yeah um, and and you look now i mean sean's right harrington kenta is now the, the number one heel in new japan as soon as he returned yep instantly it's the, it's Okada's the king i i agree there, there's it's the value i don't think they even have the, the money to throw at him at this point that they would need it's it's the value. Right okay. <laughs> Who said that? I'm sorry, that actually made me laugh. Oh, Brother Nero said Okada versus Humberto. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> now that's where the money's at, Whoa. Joe. Humberto <laughs> Carrillo versus Okada. That's a six star. Get get the fucking Tokyo Dome on the line right now. Meltzer's going to give that seven stars. I mean, Okada versus like Cole, like in NXT. Yeah, in NXT. Yeah, he'd NXT. Be great. But yeah. You're going to put Okada in NXT? I mean, if I was Okada, maybe I'd sign with NXT. Maybe I'd want to go to NXT if I was him. But come on, realistically, with someone with with, with that history and, and all he's accomplished, you're gonna uh, get the fuck out of here. You're not gonna put him in NXT. He should come in to, to the you know uh, a WrestleMania moment you know match right away. He should be you know one of the ones that gets the the best treatment ever, and that would never happen in a million years. Can you imagine if they booked him, like, basically, like, you're going to be our sort of, like, Japanese Undertaker. Like, he's not going to be a goth guy, but what I mean is, like, he comes yeah. down, his entrance is always, like, he comes down from the sky or something like that on a ramp, like, with this with this big, like, big jacket that he wears, and he throws it off, and it's, like, a big event for Okada. And in, in WWE, like, that's how you, you have him wrestle selectively like The Undertaker. And, and, you know, less than what we get now. But I'm saying years back where it was only pivotal matches. Have him do it like that. Where you don't see him week to week. Make him even more than a Lesnar special attraction if that's what you want. Well, we said that about Nakamura. And then at first, yeah. they, they held and him they back too much. that up. <laughs> yeah, well, first we were like, where is he? Yeah, but then he gave us nothing. And then uh, what we did get. I mean, NXT was, was good. Like I said, he had good matches. Samoa Joe, Finn Balor. Yeah. But amazing what we saw in New Japan level, uh, you know, King of Strong style stuff, we haven't seen since I, I honestly feel him and Sami Zayn had their first match. Yeah, one of the reasons why, like, some of these guys do well is because some people just watch the big events of New Japan or the big events of whatever it is. So when they wait, when they wait a few months, they don't watch a guy, and then they see a big event in J New Japan, they have this crazy match. Like, people get really hyped up about that. Problem is, put that guy on TV every week, and you're going to get pretty bored pretty quick unless they've yeah. got something else to offer. So you're seeing their exposed self. Somebody in the chat just asked that, basically, and I'm sort of summing it up with that. Uh, yeah. I think it was 75 Sky, the new, um, our new member here. A um, new member. A new member. Speaking of that, we got to go to the donations. People are uh, clamoring for that. Thank you guys for the donations, too, very much. And yes, Mike, I don't want to talk about that because, man, I just want to be left alone. Please leave me alone. Like, can you just please leave me alone? I've asked so many times to be left alone, to be stopped being attacked, to talk about and bring up stuff. Just, just leave me alone. Like, if you leave me alone, I'm going to leave you alone. Leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Please just let me do my shows and uh, do my stuff and have fun and have a good time. Like, uh, just leave me alone. That's all I got to say. Kane and I'm donating. Here it comes. 
The Big Red Retard! I mean, oops. I still think that WWE should have a live feed for house shows on the WWE Network. Also have other promotions on their live... What the fuck? It cut off again. <laughs> There's something... Wanna... I don't know why it's cutting off stuff. Um, include more original series like WWE trivia shows where WWE fans win money. Wow, that'd be cool. I mean, all that stuff is going to cost them money. You know, doing a live feed from the arena, that'll cost them money. They can't even do house shows right now because they're so dead in the water. Malibu Al. Malibu, thank you for the donation, man. Super but jazz. I agree. Why not? Super jazz. Why can't we do commentary? Well, I don't know why I said yeah. Fugi. Well, Drew Bar, it's the, ter- it's the tumor, bro. Now, nah, Drew Bar, thank you for the $2. Yeah, I mean, imagine that, like, where you could do house shows and have guest announcers all the time, like AEW kind of does, but even more. That'd be sick. Oh, shit. Yo, Derek Welsh. He's going to take over as champion. Get that crayon ready. All my friends are drinking crayon. They're drinking crayon. All my friends are drinking crayon. I got the fucking crayon. That out of nowhere championship is mine for the time being. Woo! Derek Welsh. Derek. That's why he wanted to lose the play, so we could take the fucking belt. Take the fucking belt, baby. You gonna shine that? Give it hell hell yeah. Tommy, why didn't you tell me yeah, Crystal he's not going was a pork? I agree. He's, she he's has being those DSLs. The guy, you know. Just saying. Dick sucking lips. Ugh. I'm gonna come to. There it goes again, cutting off. That's so weird. I'm gonna come to Black <laughs> Mountain and show Crystal my White Mountain. Joe, did you see Dunn and Riddle sneak onto Triple H's plane? Yeah, that was really funny. I saw it on Twitter. That was pretty funny. It reminded me of a hockey team or like a hockey video. You'd see a goofy. <laughs> yeah. All of their, like, their story throughout the night, you know, the buildup. It was, it was great. It was really great. Oh, shit. Oh, now it's really going on. Whoa. Now there's a war happening. Stop punching my car. That's all I got. Oh. Stop punching my car. Oh, my God. Will Jim Connett ever return to see? Um, Rob Heller, thank you for the $21. Will Jim Cornette ever return to see? What? Robert Heller, $21. He is going to become the champion. I think he meant NWA and it changed it to C. That happened to me before. Really? What did they do? What the fuck is going on? Ever- Maybe. I, I'm just, I've seen autocorrect do that, so. Um, I mean... God, I don't think so, man. I think he's pissed at them. Yeah, he he went off on Lagana recently in one of his uh, podcasts. Yeah, it's, he, um, he went into it how he only charged them twenty five hundred dollars, and he's like, "It sounds like a lot, but I I wouldn't leave my house for a quarter of that usually." Yeah, and I you, you know, or that's a quarter of what I would leave my house for, and how you know, as I mentioned earlier, they they fucked him over good by leaving that clip in. And rather than be like, oh, we left it in and, you know, we'll be more mindful in the future, but we thought it was fine. And, and you know, they threw him under the bus and fucked him over bad. And he was doing this as favors to them, working massive long days. You know, when he had to do the production, he was like, give me $2,500 and get my hotel room because it's a long ass drive. And he would go down there, and he wasn't just doing commentary. He was producing. He was in the meetings every day, 11, 12-hour meetings he was doing daily. And he's like, I, I would get in there early in the morning. I wouldn't get out till midnight, go to the you know Waffle House, and then do it again the next day. We'd do that. Then we'd film six episodes. I had to produce matches. I had, He's like, I did a lot to help them out, you know, and, and just because I had an interest in it. I liked NWA, and I was trying to be helpful. 
and then they keep that clip in and then they throw me under the bus and I'm like that that fuck that sucks that really does suck if I say something stupidly uh, mm. offensive right now as a joke with a comparison which which wasn't even you know that bad but you you knowingly leave it in and then you know oh well Jake won't be here anymore. That, that's wrong you know to to go ahead and turn it that way well, like I think you know Cornette has fucked me over but I like you know I like Cornette still. I think he did yeah, get fucked I still fucked like listening to him. Yeah, I mean, it's just... I think he got he fucked had, he over. He has a very real, honest view, and, and that's... that's. Well, I think he has a really it's, opinionated it's, view. I don't think he's always well, honest. I, 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 honest as far as, like, through he his wasn't, eyes. He, wasn't, he went on the same type of rants that he goes on on everybody with me, and he basically made stuff up about me. You know what I mean? I should honest is his perception. I'm like, saying like, like, he, like he's all out. Like whatever he believes, he he'll die. Well, that's for. what I, that's what I think. I mean, I, maybe he believes what he's saying about me, what he said about me. But it's like, and you know, it people, may not be factual. I could and pull it may apart not be politically correct, but he if that's a hill for him to die on, he's gonna martyr himself to the end of time. So it's I, entertaining. I don't I don't know his respective, but it's yeah, entertaining. It's, that's the thing that's always bothered me about people. Like, if, if somebody wants to rant on me, it's okay. If somebody's upset at me or I rant on me about something. But when I start hearing stuff that's made up, that's when it's like, Yeah, that's what? inaccurate. Even if well, they believe it, it's like, what the fuck is going accurate. on? You just have to let it be fun. Like, I can, and the best thing is all the stuff is I can prove it. I can prove almost everything. Oh, yeah. Like, you were, you were most able to of do that immediately. But some of the stuff he's right, you know what I mean? But it's like... The guy goes off on who knows why. I mean, he, go, he went off on me for four tweets for inviting him to the show. I invited yeah. him to the show in four just, tweets. He was triggered and took things the wrong way, and then I mean, it turned into an all-out. But he I also love had, uh, what's his name, Bolin in his ear yapping about you, too. So that was yeah, like yeah. You, had, you had double bad impressions in, that, in his eyes. And Bolin's, you know? Bolin had all kinds of stuff wrong, and he just lies about everything anyway. But, yeah, but yeah, they're he's entertaining. A, he's, a, he's a fucking... Bolin and him and, and Cornette are entertaining. They lie about everything. Or like they lie about a tons of shit, but it's entertaining. It doesn't matter. But this what he was fucked over. Like that's the I I, I liked Cornet in NWA. It sucks that he's not there. I mean Stu's okay. Stu Bennett's great. He's a great but guy. Look at how many people you know is, is outright said that it's just not as entertaining without him there, and that's for sure. He's he, yeah. There's a it's a glaring example of him being missing on commentary. And I think a couple people need that. A couple of these companies could use a heel guy, like a straight up heel motherfucker, like a dude who's a fucking asshole. A lot of these companies need this guy that's a prick on the commentary booth. And yeah, that's what's missing in WWE. We say it all the time. You need that heel commentator. And not Corey to, Graves, because Corey make, Graves is. No, he's not a heel. He's a. Uh, I, I don't even know how to categorize that. His shtick is bullshit. Yeah, he's just kind of like this annoyed, like, I don't know, like... And I hate the people that say, oh, it's just because you're jealous, that's why you say this. No, he he, he sounds like a condescending twat. That's 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 honestly how I view it. it it's just, what he says is, is, it's not even like, oh, it's biased. No, that's not it. He's it's like just, Baron Corbin or something. sounds like a fan that's heavily opinionated more than actually, like, representing uh, uh, an opinion See, I don't even business. think that. I think that he just sounds... Tweenerish. He doesn't sound like Douchey. he. Yeah, he doesn't know. He when he's acting heel in the WWE, Corey Graves, when he's on the mic, he sounds like he doesn't really even believe what he's saying. He sounds like he's gr grumbling about something, but that he doesn't really necessarily even believe it. Like, yeah, we've, like, we've made that comparison. But before, if MJF, right? if MJF got on the mic, or if even Kevin Owens got on the mic as a heel and started talking shit, like they kind of sound like that they are believing what they're saying. Corey I said Graves this a few weeks ago. Doesn't. He's just he. It doesn't ever sound believable when it comes from him. Yeah, it doesn't. Remember we went over that with the Michael and Cole then, call as well. And then Jerry Lawler is just believable. like Jerry Lawler is like old grandma fucking Bernstein has no like, idea what's going on, and everything to him is like, wow, I've never seen this before. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this before. I've never seen anything like this on Raw. I've never seen this. I've never seen that. Wow, this is the craziest night of Raw ever. Yeah, is it really is Jerry? What, just, just what everybody wants to hear constantly. Is it really the craziest uh, night? Do you remember when they tried to cut a man's dick off and said that they would choppy choppy his pee pee? I mean, maybe that. I'm sorry, that might be the most. That's like one. That's not even. There's a whole list of shit. There's a thousand. You could probably make top. Like whenever Jerry now says like that's this is one of the craziest nights on Raw. This is the craziest night on Raw ever. Or that's the craziest thing ever on Raw. Whenever he says that, you could literally make a list probably of a thousand other things that are crazier than that that he was there for. 
It's like, do you have amnesia yeah, from the heart attack? About it entirely. This guy is fucked up. Let me go to the donations. There are some coming in. People, they're going to battle. They're going to battle for that title. We are in a battle for the JCS Digital Championship. You guys think Adam Cole will stay in NXT or move up? Um, I think Adam Cole will move up, uh, but right now I don't think there's any rush whatsoever. Uh, if there was no AEW, I think it's possible he'd be coming up now or, or maybe already be up. Uh, villain, thank you for the $33. Villain, you are now the top contender for the uh, JCS Digital Championship. But yeah, because they need value in a uh, in NXT, I think he could, he could stay another year because yeah, of Triple H is still saying that even Baszler hasn't moved up. I mean, which which realistically she hasn't until it's official. So, but right. that was part of his NXT call, and I think they want to disassemble the Undisputed Era before anybody moves up. So that's going to take time. Well, um, villain is now the new digital JCS champion right now. So thank you to the villain. Looks like we're gonna have a little squaring away of uh, craziness. And speaking of uh, craziness, we had uh, we did have uh, go on Twitter, man. Give uh, Thunder Rosa some love. Give her some follows. She has been following me for a while, and she's been following you guys for a while. So she's familiar with the shows and stuff. She's great. She actually just tweeted us. Look at that doggy, man. Just like I got a, I got two dogs upstairs. Our dogs would love each other. Um, very nice uh, of her. And uh, appreciate it. And she, man, Thunder Rosa is fucking, Thunder Rosa is hot. She's a good wrestler. Like, I just love this girl. Like, I don't know what it is, man, but there's something about her. Like, she is totally, she's kicking ass in NWA, but like, I'm telling you, man, if she could get to the WWE or somewhere else too, she, like, I, like she's good, man. Like, it, she's going to get there. I got to believe it. There's so many, I'm looking at all the women out there now. And, you know, Mercedes Martinez was one that, you know, we were surprised wasn't signed somewhere and she did but now now that she's signed and a couple other women have been signed and people are kind of making their stake everywhere like to me i know that thunder rose is obviously nwa women's champion and and she's obviously in the nwa but it's like man she has got to be the top sought after woman's wrestler i'm trying to think of the top three women if i work for ring of honor if i work for AEW, if i work for wwe who am i out there trying to sign who am I out there trying to give over $100,000 to as far as a woman? And I'd go with her. And she talked about being a referee when she was on the show earlier tonight, about how yeah. they offered her being a ref. And I, that shocked me because, I mean, yes, she could do that, but, like, she, like that's like Michael Jordan. Like, and I'm not trying to compare her to Michael Jordan. Or like, maybe something like, I don't know, like, that's like a, a, a superstar, like a wrestler who's, like, one of the top in the world, in my opinion. In her, I believe, prime. She's 33. I'm 35. Thunder Rose is 33. Being like, hey, want to come over here and be a ref? Like, what? Yeah, maybe in six years or 10 years. Like, if Thunder Rosa was 38, I could see that. If she was 38 and she was like, I want to kind of relax and hang it up and I'll take the gig. Like, maybe at 38. But at 33, be a referee when, when she's so fucking awesome in the ring? That's crazy. Now, if she had underlining injuries I don't know about and had to, you know, get out of it. And by the way, women just tend to a lot of times seem to break down. They have shorter, I feel like they have shorter careers um, because, versus the men. At least that's the way I've seen it. You know, and I don't know what what the reason is. Smaller bones or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, just surprising. Maybe in five years. I, I got to assume that job will maybe be there eventually somewhere anyway for her. Yeah, but she can um, ref in the future for sure. Now she's yeah, now it's like a, got so much to offer. I just stab myself. Fuck me, that hurt. Um, yeah, I just I was shocked to hear that. I I get it, but um, but why wouldn't why the hell wouldn't WWE be like, yeah, I mean we could use you as a as a ref, but we'd sign you as a as a wrestler. They wouldn't try her out as a wrestler. They're, they're women now, and look at what they're you know doing with the majority of them. Well, AEW needs her. Yeah, that's AEW who needs is her. The one that I I think she would shine with. 
I don't know what her contract is with NWA, but in the next six months, if it's up, if it's up, or if it's it's okay for her to go somewhere soon, or in a year, or whatever, I mean, she has to be on the radar for a couple hundred thousand or a hundred thousand dollar contract somewhere, like at a real big company, because especially AEW, she could really fucking, she would help that AEW women's division big time. Like really, and I'm dead serious. Like th- absolutely, is, we've been they talking need about some her tutelage and guidance and good feuds. We've been talking about her for years on this show. Like, I mean, they got one good match out of the women's division so far. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that's really would, what it feels like. If she wrestled anybody in AEW, she would give probably one of the best matches of of AEW. Like, I mean, instantly, like right now, like it's the no brainer. Absolutely. Yeah, I, think so oh. I want you to I want you to eat through the center of my diaper so one of my poopers falls out in your mouth. <laughs> oh, no. oh my god. That sounds pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, no. just one, I just want you to eat one of my nuggets. Oh fuck that heel bitch, that's my championship. Derek Welsh came in with the twenty two dollars, but unfortunately. He had already been bested by the villain at $33. Uh, Derek Welsh, man, what's up, dude? Thank you, man. Love the pooper donation. $22 pooper uh, donation. Wow. Much appreciated. It comes out, man. It comes out sometimes. But the villain right now has crowned himself. I meant Kenneth on WWE ever again. Oh, he meant WWE. Robert Heller meant WWE. Um... I'm already surprised that he hadn't come back, but he's got real bad beef with them. Yeah. Like Stephanie, I'm assuming Stephanie hates him. Like, I, I it's so stupid because he would be, uh, I hate to say that he's, while I love Jim Cornette and while I agree with him on a lot of things, he's so old school now at this point, like his, his mind is so much older now that coming into the WWE would cause so many problems because he would be angry at stuff. He would be angry, and it would piss the people off that are trying to do things. Remember they want Yes Man? Yes Man? Yeah. He is like the They don't opposite. want someone to, to butt heads and be opinionated. It's the same reason there's rumors recently, not to compare everything to Star Trek, but recently rumors that like you know guys were let go of the Star Trek because they were too Star Trek, yeah. which is stupid because... That's the problem. The fans want more real Star Trek. Instead, we're getting this action fucking pseudo SJW yeah. like ooh, like it, it's cosplaying a Star it's Trek. Like, not... dude, it's like, dude, Gene Roddenberry made Star Trek to be like the future is different. We don't swear. We don't fight like we did. The, we, we all work together. We all get along. That was Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek future. Even in Star Trek, the movie four, Star Trek four, they go to Earth in the past. And they swear, they got, people are swearing on Earth. You know, Kirk steps into the road and someone's like, get out of the street, you fucking dumbass. And he's like, what? Well, you're dumbass to you or whatever. And then like Spock is like, in this time, they use this crude language. And Kirk's like, oh, okay. I didn't get it. But in Star Trek, the new show, they say fuck. They say fuck. There's fighting everywhere. It's dark. People are saying fuck shit. Even in Picard, they're saying fuck. And they're like, well, we're trying to update it with the times. No. Back in the 80s, people swore all the time in the 90s and 80s. But they didn't have it in the show because you're, you're, you're trying to pretend that this is the future and things are different and people don't use that language. And I understand that that can be boring, but that's the point, is things are different. It's like fucking 22-something the year. And, and people don't swear like that. And that, like, why is Captain Picard saying fuck? Why are these people saying fucking shit and suck and like what the fuck is going on they're using language from our time and and um and you know fans are angry some fans don't care but some fans are angry and i forget what my whole point in this oh with jim rot jim cornett cornett so yeah cornett they want yes men and, and he would butt heads and he's so old school that uh, he he hates any of this this newfangled fancy wrestling with the dancing and the magic hand grenades and you know all that shit so any idea that isn't like to the strict value of what it was ages ago he's he's gonna fight against and that's what they don't want so dude double dumbass on you is hilarious <laughs> that fucking is hilarious in star trek 4 that fucking star trek's hilarious 
Um, um, I, I, one thing I was going to bring up before, too, is uh, we, we've been kind of proven right. Uh, listening to a few different interviews now that Matt's gone and, and hearing some uh, speculation and some people kind of confirming things. Somebody was speaking to a source. Again, this is not fully confirmed, but it seems to line up with what we've heard previously. It said uh, when it comes to Jeff Hardy returning now, you know, getting ready to come back, he's, he's going to the Performance Center and whatnot. He's got to finish up with his court case. But it said uh, there's a lot of history repeating itself. WWE always wanted to push him. And once they started to, they realized, unfortunately, Jeff has got a lot of demons, just like he did last time. <laughs> so that's oh. their huge issue. But the, the thing, I mean, we knew that, but the thing I wanted to bring up here is, is uh, it said when they brought him back with Matt, the idea for the tag team was not really an, a, a, what they wanted. They wanted to bring Jeff back. They didn't want to bother with the broken universe, even though they were eventually into it. They didn't fancy that. They wanted Jeff and they had to bring Matt to be sort of a chaperone. The idea was that if Matt's there, Jeff's wild impulses would be tempered. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case, but they didn't, they, they, it's, it's just pretty much outright states what we had thought for so long. They didn't want Matt. They wanted Jeff to return, but one, they were a package deal together because they were both intertwined in the Jesus. broken universe and, and going around as a tag team with the, you know, the, the, when they were procuring all the gold and, you know, they were tag team champions all over the place. They obviously weren't going to split. So WWE had to sign them both. So they thought that, well, all right, we'll take them both back, but Jeff's going to be the one we'll push. And if Matt's there, it'll be good because he'll keep Jeff in line. Unfortunately, Matt didn't keep Jeff in line, and it just further states that they didn't have any interest with the broken universe. So, Yeah, I mean... I, it's well, just more I, of what we I, already, I, what already I, knew. What but. I definitely believe is that you know they really value Jeff. And, and the, the tag team together, they value a little bit. They value... But Jeff, they also value. But so I think WWE values the Hardy Boys tag team. WWE values Jeff Hardy, and WWE doesn't really value Matt Hardy. That's just what they've always thought. And I would agree with them back in the day, like back when Matt was singles years ago. I, I thought he was lame for a while. I said, man, it's just kind of lame. I don't really see it. He's a good wrestler. But but when he did the broken stuff, I said that is the best thing going in the world. You know? Yeah. One or two more stories, I guess. Um, throw those out there. I'm gonna pee my pants, grab a water, and then we'll wrap. Uh, we'll play a couple more of these donations and get on to the uh, the post show. Yeah, because I gotta get up shortly, so I gotta go to the surgeon and all that fun shit. Oh yeah, what time is your shit? I have to leave here at five thirty. So, dude, you gotta get out of here. You might have to get out of here uh -oh. now. <laughs> Uh, another thing I covering with Otis, it was pretty funny. He said, uh, it all started with Mandy, as we said, you know, on, uh, just with him going ahead and being a wise guy. He's like, oh, I, I was sitting down and she's on Instagram posting beautiful pictures. And I said, what if I post a picture of her modeling pics and say, you look great, babe. And he said, pretty soon that one post had more comments than likes because there were so many people confused at what was going on. A week later on Google, when you typed in Otis, it said Otis and Mandy. Otis and Mandy, are they dating? Are they married? He said, I'm like, oh, man, this is getting a lot of attention. So I just kept pretending to creep on her, being like, hey, babe, you look great in this, pretending like we were in a relationship. He said, pretending she was my girlfriend. It was obvious to everyone at the time that she's not. It was just kind of a thing I was goofing around with. Finally got it going on in the WWE world. And, you know, since then it's been great. But he says uh, she's awesome to work with. It's basically working for free. He said, when I used to see pretty girls, I was super shy and I wouldn't say a word to them. I'd be nervous and not talk normally without stuttering. Nowadays, I get a little more confidence. And uh, Mandy's awesome. She grew up with brothers. And a lot of the fans ask me how she is behind the curtain. And he says, I say she's awesome. She jokes around. I started doing the Chris Farley stuff to her at the Performance Center. And she'd start walking, and I'd go, how you doing, beautiful peach? And I'd call Sonia my plum. And that's when Sarah Mata goes, we need everyone to have a fruit nickname. So that's how I had to, you know, keep that going, because we'd call her a banana or a strawberry. And it got out of hand because I was pretty good at nicknames. So, I mean, it all just is, is them playing around at the Performance Center. It turned into something online. And then from there, it just spiraled into this this whole big, you know, fake relationship that now is one of the headlining acts with uh you know smackdown so i uh, i i've loved everything they've done so far because it's been genuine it's had this long you know build behind the scenes and it's been very funny so 
I'm very curious to see what happens coming up tomorrow with the Valentine's Day date. Uh, big props to the Broser weights. I mean, I was, like we said before, it was absolutely friggin' hilarious to see them, you know, traveling around in one of those uh, swans on the lake, you know, paddle boats, all the stuff they did sneaking on the plane. It was, it was you know, those type of vignettes is what you need every now and again. The, the big dichotomy between their characters, Dunn is so serious and, you know, all about fighting and Matt's just, a, a, a you know, aloof and, and stoner and he's got that laid back kind of comedy to him that they complement each other so well. It, it elevates their characters, you know, tenfold. And they got some very high praise from none other than The Undertaker. He said, I was out in Florida recently for the Dusty Classic Tag Team Tournament and uh, he said... You know, the Undertaker loved the match, and that was a, a huge, huge boost to their egos for sure. So uh, they were talking and saying, you know, it's great that you're able to to pick the brains of legends like Triple H and Sean, give you advice, and then the Undertaker as well. So they were extremely happy with that. Um, next week for uh, NXT, we're going to see Leo Rush. He wants the NXT Cruiserweight Championship back. So we'll see what happens there. You know, that's going to be a hell of a match. You know, we, we saw this week uh, Leo Rush take on Angel Garza to become the number one contender. So I'm, I'm really excited to see him and Jordan Devlin go head-to-head in NXT next week. Uh, also on NXT next week, we're going to see Velveteen Dream return to action. That's right. He's going to be taking on Roderick Strong. Uh, that supposedly is looking to be the main event of NXT next week on USA. So really excited to see Velveteen dream back in the ring. Dream on baby. Um, I'm excited moments. for that. And then obviously this Sunday we have NXT takeover Portland, you know, so it's going to be a big week for NXT indeed. And then this Friday night on SmackDown, besides the Valentine's day angle, we're also getting the Miz and Morrison. Uh, they're going to be teaming up against Roman reigns and a partner of his choosing. So I'm, I'm curious to see who Roman ends up picking. Some guesses are that it would be Daniel Bryan, but we'll see what happens. I don't think he'd pick one of the Usos instead of both of them, so we'll see what happens. And then, uh, what else do we have here? Oh, uh, sorry. I fucking, there's a rumor. I'm no, no. my mic, and then I dropped my fucking <laughs> shit across the room. A, a rumor killer with the lineup that was released for Elimination Chamber. We said the six names that were announced were just a lineup. Uh, it was just as Meltzer says, a lineup sent to sell tickets, Ugh. but they haven't officially decided the participants for the chamber. It will be for the number one contendership for Mania to see who will take on the winner between uh, Goldberg and The Fiend, but WWE just threw six names in there to go ahead and sell tickets, so those might right. not be the finalists at that time. Well, now they won't be, because now even if... like. <laughs> Like, first of all, that's true. A lot of times they, they put out what they think at the time, you know, okay, here it is, and card subject to change, obviously. But sometimes it, it is exactly what happens. It could be either way. But let's say a guy like Bobby Roode, <laughs> now that this has come out, you know what I mean? Like, they'll w yeah. when this stuff comes out and becomes news, they will then change it on purpose, even though they even if they weren't going to. So whoever was really in that match, if it was Bobby Roode and, and everybody that's in it, but one of the lower level guys, you know, they're just like, fuck. Like, I was in the fucking Elimination yeah, Chamber match. There. Now, because this leaked out and people think that, oh, they know the deal. Like, now the WWE feels obligated to change it a little bit. So I'm getting cut because the other guys are in it and they're going to cut me because they'll just throw some. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Like, you know, <laughs> like, there goes my payday. There goes my fucking spot. I don't know. It's kind of funny to play these donations. Oh, shit. What's this? Fucking heel champion now. Whoa, Derek Welsh. There's no thirty-four dollar donation. Man, I gotta make a thirty-four dollar donation. Derek Welsh dropping thirty-four dollars. Damn, he wants that title. Uh, we also have Carmel and Bailey tomorrow night on SmackDown for the women's title. Some people think that they've soured on Bailey and Carmella might actually win it yeah. just to be a quick interim champion. Mm -hmm. You never know, though. I could see it because Bailey is just dead news for some reason. Um, man, you have surgery on Valentine's Day? Are you serious? No, I have to go and sign the consent forms oh, and do the whole workup tomorrow. Jesus, I was like, what? I have to that, I'm be out and about early, and then uh, they'll sign the date tomorrow, so okay, I'll find God. out when I go. I was like, wait a minute, like, what am I, crazy? 
All right. Well, we're going to we're going to get out of here in just a second here and uh we'll see what these other donations come in and me and Jake will maybe Super do the post show. I don't know. Super Jack. Sienna is one. The villain, $2. Thank you, man. Sienna is one. Oh, oh, one of the girls that you think that could be signed. Is that what you're saying? Isn't she an impact? Or is she out now? I remember her uh, uh, I'm not sure. My name is Ryback. Oh shit. Ryback. Give me some more money. My name's Ryback. I want that money, money, money. My name is fucking Ryback. Give me some more money. Money is my crack. My name's Ryback. Ryback. Forty dollars coming in. Joe the god, the king, the man. Did I miss any adjectives? Um, the sexy beast. Now, Junebug, thank you for the forty dollars, Junebug. What's up, dude? What's up, man? Holy hell, that is the largest uh, donation of the stream tonight, Junebug, who's the new twenty-five dollar producer patron as well, Junebug. Damn, and he's gonna take Derek Welsh. Unfortunately for Derek, off the board, Junebug. Thank you guys very much for these donations too, man. You guys keep the shows going and uh, keep everything we do here. So thank you guys for that. It's been a great night. Um, and then the people that reached out to Thunder Rosa too, people that did that, that's crazy too. So thank you for doing that for her. Yeah, and thank you to Junebug. But poor Derek, he just he wanted that belt so badly. Sniped is what just yeah, happened. Taken away again. Sniped. Junebug cashed in. Well, me and Jake... Um, Jake, do you want to do the post show thing on Patreon? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, me, me and Jake will do about 20 minutes on Patreon. So if you want, make sure you become a patron. We're going to go into the post show right now. Um, there's questions already up there. So if you can sneak a question in right now, try to sneak one in right now. The post is from uh, February 12th, two days ago. And I see that there's a lot of questions on there already. So we're going to try to get, we're going to try to rapid fire through those for the patrons. So come on over there. It'll be up in audio form in a little while, as always. You can download it in audio on your phone, download it anywhere. It's a podcast and uh, whatever else. So we'll have that up soon for you. are going to go record now. Unless uh, somebody else drops something to beat uh, <coughs> Junebug here. I think we got everything. So um, shout out to the chat. Tomorrow night will be um, monetize this. I'm going to be live with the SmackDown review, I believe, tomorrow. So I think I am going to do the SmackDown review tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to miss it, I don't believe. So look for me to be live with that here. And then look for me to be live with monetize this afterwards. Um, it's a thin night. Um, I got I to gotta think of something wild to do on monetize this. I think I'm going to be doing shots on monetize this. I think I'm going to be oh, getting wrecked. Valentine's yeah. Day shots. There we go. Mm, Going to get fucked up. I don't think Lee is going to be on, so... I don't know if I don't know if Leah's gonna be on or not. I don't think so though. So I think it's gonna be me and D Moon getting drunk. It's gonna be me and Moon getting drunk on Monetize This. Come stop by. <laughs> Come enjoy. All right, everybody. We are going on Patreon now. So get over there. It won't be up um we won't be live over there. We'll be uh, putting up the post show in the next uh, thirty minutes or so. So look for it in about thirty minutes, the post show. Thank you to June Bug. He has become the JCS Digital Champion, and also shout out to Broken Lion, who is the king of the wheel this week, which was epic on Sunday. And then Sunday night, we got the NXT review. Saturday night is Corrupted Podcast. Don't miss that. One of, one of Justin Bailey's last shows. Be on. Uh, be watching that Corrupted episode on uh, Patreon. And uh, I'll see you in hell. I want to fuck Debbie until cum comes out of her fucking eyeballs. Oh, no. Uh. Oh, God, I'm sorry. That was the wrong, uh, I played the wrong song. I'm sorry. Fuck. See you next time, guys. See you guys on Patreon.
this is Wardlow from AEW, and you're watching The Joe Cronin Show. A wrestling podcast with attitude. Getting off the air. Thanks to Funda Rosa for coming on the show tonight and her dog and her husband. God bless you all. God bless them in that accident. Thank God they're okay. Goodbye. We'll see you guys on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Download the app right now.